All right, this is Under Sheriff Mike Martin, and uh, we're here for Mondays with Mike, or Mighty Mike, I guess, if you yes. prefer. That's what the sheriff <coughs> likes. Um, <laughs> so I'm with Sergeant Jim Chen, uh, acting sergeant, but he acts like one, so we'll call him sergeant. <laughs> and uh, from our intel unit... And uh, we're going to go out. It's been a busy morning with squads uh, all over. And uh, stolen cars and some assaults and vehicles we're looking for. But uh, we're just going to go out and see, see what we can find. For those of you who aren't familiar with us, uh, we're with the Ramsey County Sheriff's Office, and we're headquartered in the capital city of St. Paul, Minnesota, and uh, <clears throat> we go out three times, at least three times a week, yep. and uh, patrol live so that you can see what we really do for a living, and... Uh, it's a little different than a lot of the police educational programs you see because um, we aren't. It's not just clips of the fun stuff. Nope. You get to see us driving around, talking and explaining what we do. Um, which reminds me, uh, last time, last Monday, when I went live, I ended up uh, finding a stolen car. It was a perfect example of how, uh, you know, it just happens sometimes when you're not out there. I saw a Kia that had a broken out window and I called it out and uh, followed it and it turned out to be a stolen car and fortunately we had to follow it quite some distance but the suspect eventually stopped and uh, we took him into custody, and he had a uh, catalytic converter in the back seat with a sawzall, and he also had uh, narcotics on him. We took him into custody. I saw in the in the comments people asked if why I didn't search the trunk. Um, that's because I wasn't doing the impound inventory of the car. I left. Uh, to go down and do the reports and book the suspect in um, at the jail. Someone else actually did the inventory uh, of the car and there was nothing in the trunk. So a lot of people speculated that anything from 100 catalytic converters to a body might have been in the trunk. Uh, but. The other members of the CAT team searched, and uh, there was no bodies in there. There weren't any bodies, which is good, because um, that would have been a longer report. Yes. I would have had to write. So, um, the suspect was booked. He had quite a criminal history, and uh, I interviewed him, and um, he will be dealt with within the criminal justice system. Me and Thomas were going to call you on Wednesday and ask for some tips. Some we, tips? Oh, yeah. You, you were out and found them so fast, and we drove wow. around the hole for a couple hours, and we didn't have anything. And uh, there were people who, who, especially my kids, who think I have eyes in the back of my head because I pulled over and the car came behind, but that's because I saw it when I drove past it, and then I pulled over because he had his right turn signal on. And uh, waited for him to turn and then kind of turned around in behind him. But um, <clears throat> so we will keep the radio up, but uh, there'll be a lot of chatter on there that is far away from us. Yep. So, Jim, do you want to explain what you do in the intel unit? Yep. So, 
Wait a sec, I gotta get a piece of paper. I'm gonna take notes so that if I ever get asked, I'm just kidding. My, uh, I know what you do. Myself and uh, a couple other deputies uh, and civilian staff, I guess, work down there. We uh, monitor social media. Um, we monitor the radio, sending out messages to the CAT team. Um, if something big's going down, a uh, vehicle that's recently been stolen. Uh, if a vehicle is stolen and it's trackable, the intel unit, we're the ones that do the tracking. We contact the owner or contact um, the company, such as if it's Volvo or Volkswagen, get a hold of them uh, so that they can start tracking for us. And we relay the information on where the vehicle is out to uh, the deputies that are out on the street at that point in time. Perfect. We and then a, you also send pictures yes. out sometimes if yep. there's a known suspect yep. and like an assault call or something like that. So they can send a, a photo out to the deputies and officers working on the street so they know what the suspect looks like. Yep. yep it helps. Uh, we keep very good records of... Uh, those individuals we've had contact with, we have files that uh, we'll refer to, get photographs, um, you know, possible addresses where they'll be going, places that they frequent, uh, things of that nature. <clears throat> My voice is a little off today. I have a little bit of a stuffy nose, so don't worry, I'm not going to get you sick. But Did you party too hard for no, the Super Bowl yesterday? Not, not at all. Okay, just check it. I did. Uh, I did watch the Super Bowl with my wife and kids. But I, uh, no, no, no party. I watched it with my family as well. My wife, my uh, two sister-in-laws, my son's girlfriend Shauna, and uh, my son Nick. My daughter Kelly came home for a while, and um, I think they were mainly there though to watch the halftime show. Yeah, most of them because. That's when they showed the most interest, and they wanted the TV turned up. Oh yeah. So mine's always for the the commercials and you know making sitting there eating appetizers all day. Did you have a favorite commercial? Um, I can't remember who it was. I liked the. Uh, uh, he's a guy that plays Elf. Oh. Here, Will, Ferrell. Will Ferrell. Will yeah, Ferrell. Commercial he was in. That was pretty good. But yeah, that was good. <clears throat> I wasn't overly impressed with the commercials as compared to the years past, but they're still fun to watch. <clears throat> I'm not a big football fan. I'm more of a hockey fan. So I, I wasn't rooting for one team or the other yesterday either. My wife was a was rooting for the Chiefs, so she got. Well, I wanted the Chiefs to win, but I thought the Eagles were going to win. So did I. So. I'm actually uh, was happy that the Chiefs won. Uh, I have a lot of relatives that are Chiefs fans, so down in Kansas and Oklahoma and Texas. But what's your favorite hockey team? Oh, Wild, of course. I'm oh, a big yeah, Wild fan. The Wild. Yeah. Go to uh, try to take my daughters to a couple games during each season. We, we, this year's been a little different. We've only gotten out to one, but I am a big, big Minnesota Wild hockey fan. Good. I'm not a, not a Blackhawks and Penguins fan. You know? Ugh, no, <laughs> of course not. No, Kaprizov is awesome oh, yeah. to watch. They they haven't looked great lately, no. but um, I think they'll come around. They will. They'll come around. They've just had a, a few hiccups. Yep, and we'll see what happens during the trade deadline. Deadline, what they do, if they make any moves or not. I'm expecting they will, but you just never know. I do have the, the comments up. Oh, so any good one? Let, let us know if you see any. I will. Uh, yes, Kathy, a lot of the snow is melting away. It's been upper 30s uh, for the past few days so it's starting to clear stuff up I think the Bravo, five, nine, the side one, roads one, and alleys yeah, in St. Paul here still aren't aren't up to par but Arizona, Alpha Lima, at least we're, eight, five, four, we're making nine. a little bit of uh, leeway or a little bit of yeah, leeway with the, the snow in the roads and Bravo 591 sounds like her brother and nephew are back there and then the husband's inside 
at this point, a lot of people talking about the football game on here. A lot of discussion about the football game. Yes. Kathy Wagner misses the North Stars. Ah, the North Stars. They were fun to watch. Yep. They sure were. But I, I get my, um, my satisfaction of the North Stars visiting Tom Reed. Yes. When we go to Tom Reed's for lunch and he sits down and talks to us and talk all things hockey. Yeah, Tom's always always nice when you go in there. He is. Very willing to come and chat with you. Very, very down to earth guy. <clears throat> Got some people watching us from Canada. Canadian viewers. Where in Canada does it say? Let's see here. No, Ontario. Ontario. Good. Watching. Oh, Good. Winds, Windsor, Ontario. Oh, nice 50-degree day. Oh, that's nice for there. Yes. Yeah. I'm looking forward to... That's kind of more the southern part of Ontario, I think, on yep. the eastern part. We're on, just so people know, we're on the east side of St. Paul on Maryland Avenue, driving eastbound. <laughs> at Prosperity by the uh, Bureau of Criminal Apprehension Building. Shout out to our partners there, Drew Evans uh, and Scott Mueller and Brian Marcord and all of our folks there that assist us in everything we do. They got a good group over there. They do. I think that's the vehicle on the other side of that tree. A lot of people watching from Canada. <clears throat> I, I like it. We got a lot of Canadian friends. Yep. We got someone from Newfoundland. And uh, what do you think of? There's he. Not sure where he's at. <clears throat> what did you think of Chris Stapleton's rendition of the uh, national anthem? Ah, that was awesome. Yes, it was. I love Chris Stapleton. His voice is like you doing work? crazy. Yeah. He's just fine for now. Someone watching from the United Kingdom as well. Ah. It's nice to have people from uh, across the world coming here to see what we do. Yep. We're going to go south on White Bear. This poor lady's out in the street because the sidewalk's probably a little icy. Or she likes to walk in the street. It could be. You never know. We went and picked up dinner the other night, me and my daughter, and I got in the car, and the car told me, be careful, it you know, could be icy. Oh. I'm like, it's 36 degrees, it's going to be fine. <laughs> well, we found the ice. Uh, yeah, we slid uh, a little bit. Just kind of, a little bit of black ice, didn't expect it. But. I laugh when uh, I walk down my sidewalk at home and go out to the driveway and slip and fall on my rear end. <laughs> then I get in my car, and it says, careful, icy. <laughs> right. It's like, wait, it, you, you couldn't have told me that when I was leaving the house? So we do have members of the cat team. Three, number one, zero, five, 24 year old girl <coughs> was stomach pain. She's been in the bathroom for an hour. The uh, members of the cat team are out right now. Um, so they're out looking for stolens. I know they've recovered at least a couple already today. Uh, stolen cars and we'll see if we can't find uh, occupied stolen maybe yep. it's getting to be that time of day it is they'll be coming out more so <clears throat> it's anything like last Wednesday it could be kind of quiet too yeah you never know 
They're reporting saying that shoplifter show me out. Fifty-two thirty, go team. Good day. What do we got for a temperature? Ah, uh, forty-two. Oh, beautiful. Forty. Uh, we should be wearing shorts, right? Over you know what, though, the. the, the local forty-one sixty-six not flexing to an online on the sixty-seven-year-old male single episode. The uniform shorts. You know that that they don't quite cut it. They're not very flattering. You know what? I'm not okay. Mr. Style, no. but uh, brown. Sure the UPS clear, style right? shorts no. do not cut it. No, I'm I'm not a fan. So nobody wants to see my legs. I can I, tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> At the state fair, a lot of people yep. were wearing shorts, and yep. I just uh, I can't bring myself to do it. No, it, I mean it would have been nice, but yeah. no, I yeah. I couldn't either. Are you aware of the address off of York that has connections to it? It does get uh, gets mighty warm here in August. Yeah, during, during the does. state fair, so yeah, and it's okay, uh, it does. It gets hot. I could go all total plain clothes, yeah, like shorts and a t-shirt and whatever. But shorts with uniform just don't work. No, for me. Reno 911 shorts. Oh, Reno 911 is Lieutenant... Uh, Lieutenant Dangle. Dangle, thank yes. you. Yes, Lieutenant <laughs> Dangle. With the white boots, the white yeah. cowboy boots. Let's do boot goofing. And I'm done. So, yeah. the, so our Try Canadian channel, friends... Three. Are you fans of Letter Kenny? <laughs> I love watching Letter Kenny. I do as well. I don't know why. Hey squad, you have an open <laughs> mic on channel 3. Let's see if anybody's going to respond to that. I like it too, it's just kind of... Kind of dumb comedy. It is. Well, that's why I like it, I think, because I don't actually have to think. I just laugh. Or pay too much of attention to it. Yeah. <clears throat> so we're over here um, on the east side. We're by Harding High School. Um, people may have heard about the stabbing that occurred at Harding High School on Friday where uh, a young man, a 16-year-old boy, was stabbed to death during a fight. <clears throat> um, and uh, it... You know, has raised a lot of issues. The fam, the families of the students here obviously are upset. Um, the there's no school today because of that homicide. Uh, another student was taken into custody, and uh, it sounds like it may be you know involving different groups that were in a, a dispute. One of the things that occurs when we have an incident like that is that we immediately look at who may retaliate. Yep. What, because we all have good friends who are would be upset and um, the uh, you know we, we wonder is there going to be retaliation for uh, a homicide like this <clears throat> and you know what can we do to identify the people who may and then intervene to prevent it from occurring and so that's something that we've really been focused on since last Friday is um, identifying people that might be involved in potential retaliation and then working to try to prevent that and um, we have community ambassadors um, our community outreach folks and others that can reach out to the youth some of them already have good relationships and uh, with a lot of the kids and they can talk to them and help them 
work through their grief and anger and um, try to keep the community safe and them safe as well. I think Reverend Spence did a good job on Friday. Oh yeah, Reverend Spence uh, and uh, some of our ambassadors were there. I know I saw Mickey Frost. Who else did I see? I saw um, Trey Pollard with uh, We Push for Peace, I think it's called. Um, and a number of other people. We're going to run the plate on that car. It's facing the wrong way with some young kids in it. I kind of like having a partner that can do my Quite computer work for me. <laughs> it comes back clear. Go to the dispute. All right. There, so. There's a, a lot of discussion right now in the community as to, you know, how do we prevent incidents like this from occurring? Um, there are no longer school resource officers, which I would argue would help deter stuff like this and de-escalate uh, tensions when they occur. Uh, but that's something that, you know, the school board and the uh, administration of the school has to to decide. Yep. It's it's never a good thing when kids are bringing weapons and that into school. And it's no becoming quite a common occurrence lately. Well, we've been dealing with that a lot here lately, with kids bringing guns to school, and um, as if that's not bad enough, posing in the school <laughs> right They're taking pictures of them with the guns which is obviously uh, alarming to the other students and anyone else who sees it yeah. um, 44, 44. <clears throat> so our job when we see that is to get those guns off the street which we've we've had good luck with here recently but it's kind of a never-ending battle I know uh, a lot of you were probably watching it. I think it was two Fridays ago, not this past Friday, the one before when uh, the sheriff, Bob Fletcher is our sheriff, and Pat Scott, his partner, responded to a hotel for a disturbance. And uh, it was a bunch of young kids who were in a hotel room and most of them fled when the police arrived and they found five guns inside there. And today I got uh, back link analysis charts from the ATF on two of those guns were tied to prior incidents um, where shell casings were recovered that were matched to those firearms. And uh, again, fortunately, those guns are now off the street. Yep. It's always good when we can get them off the street before they cause any more damage. It's kind of kind of scary to think of the amount of kids that are running around nowadays carrying guns, especially guns with switches on them. Oh yeah, it's unbelievable the amount of uh, auto sears that are on the guns that make them fully automatic, which takes a already scary firearm and makes it even scarier yeah. and less reliable yeah. so it's shooting all over the place and uh because it's impossible when a handgun is firing fully auto to maintain control yes. over where those bullets are going and unfortunately innocent people then get hit we're northbound on johnson parkway at Phelan, in case anyone's wondering Last Wednesday, I had a lot of people uh, <clears throat> commenting about 
your call number on Monday. Oh, my call number. <laughs> I still have no idea why I used someone else's call number. I used Steve Lydon's call number, 2008, instead of mine, which I should remember because mine's 2007, or as I like to say, 2007. Um, so I should be able to remember mine. Um, and it's based on your badge number, too. Also, my badge number seven. So you would think I could remember <laughs> that. But you know what? All's well that ends well, right? Well, and you just, you know, your mind's not thinking on, about that. You were thinking about if that guy was going to run or what he was going to do when he was pulling down the alley. It's, right. I was watching it. Just as, I'm like, what is this guy doing? Is he going to take off? Is he... Because at one point in time, I thought for sure he was going to. So I, I thought he was too. I thought he would speed up and then he would kind of slow down. And I thought, is he going to give up? I thought for sure he was going to get out. Parkside Drive, standing in the middle of the street, smelling male 40s, winter hat, black clothes and boots. I thought he was going to get out and bail on foot. And uh, I... You know, just one I think that was one. just hoping that there were squads that could actually yep. chase him down <laughs> if, if that occurred. Um, but uh, and I actually, when I interviewed him, he said he was debating whether or not to take off um, or give up. And he eventually decided that he'd be in less trouble if he just gave up, yep. which was a good decision yep. on his part. Which I'm glad because he admitted to me he was on drugs. Oh, yeah. So he probably wasn't making the best decisions anyway. But uh, fortunately, he gave up. And uh, then I could conserve my energy. Yes. <clears throat> Anytime you don't have to chase someone is a good day. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But I think that, that whole arrest, the whole... It, it went down, you know, just perfect. I, I couldn't, want them all to couldn't go. have gone down easier. No use of force. I did uh, I did notice some people commented about me having my gun out. I did have my gun out only because I wasn't sure what was going on. And uh, he, was, he looked a little hyped up from behind, but I didn't point it at him. Um, and I holstered it as soon as I realized that he was given up and we were called for so and that, I mean, that's common we don't know what they're thinking exactly he's driving a stolen car I mean, you just don't know what's going on so we're on Maryland at Arcade a busy uh, north south artery here on the east side Johnson High School's just north of here a couple blocks it looks like uh, the kids are just getting out of school and coming down to get on the bus. Actually, this is where I saw yep. the guy. Maybe we should go back up there. Maybe it's like a good fishing hole. <laughs> he, he wasn't a student, but... <laughs> we got some uh, some mannequins out there, too. We might be doing. I saw the mannequins. I don't Question. know. That's... There's a clothing store there with some mannequins outside. Yep. Thought it was people at first and then realized it didn't have heads on them. I'm going to head over here to this call on uh, at Washington Technology Magnet School. Yep. They've had uh, some problems there lately at that school. There was a, a fight that led to shots fired. What was that, like two weeks ago, I maybe? So. <clears throat> um, so we'll kind of head that way and see what happens. The room in here that... Uh, Durango we were in on Wednesday, the mount was great. I was a little squished. Uh, whose car were you in? The SRT. Oh, the SRT. Yeah. Oof. 
So, yeah, that thing's not made for police work, really. It's made for ch for chases. <laughs> chases. That's about yeah. one. <clears throat> and for looking good. It's a good looking oh, yeah, car. It's a nice looking car. And the interior in there is pretty fancy. Yes. This isn't a bad looking car either. Though. I know this one's nice. Yeah, what I think is funny about this car is it's got cloth seats in the front, but it's got a leather seat oh, yeah. in the back. I guess I never looked That's weird. But we don't let bad guys get in the back of this car. No. No. So. It just seemed kind of unusual. And you know what I, I miss from my old Durango is uh, the... Um, Uh, st uh, steering wheel heater and the seat heater. Oh yeah, I don't have that. <coughs> so, so when, when my car was in the shop, I had uh, Sergeant Cervatka's old uh, Jeep. Okay. And I was out driving one day, and the steering wheel was like hot to touch. <laughs> Uh, yeah. What is going on? I <laughs> pull up next to Pat and I'm like, something's wrong with this car. The steering wheel's hot. He's like, oh, you got to go in here and you can turn that down. It's like, oh, it was on as high as could be. Oh, but man, it was, you just could barely grab onto it. So we just crossed into the Central District in St. Paul. And uh, we're going to go over to this call at Washington Magnet School. Four, four, four. One, you called for? Has it been signed yet? No, I don't think so. <clears throat> yeah, we, uh, I had a Suburban <coughs> that I had that was my, uh, personal car up until about, I don't know, about three years ago. And uh, I borrowed my wife's car once and it had a nice heated steering wheel and I was commenting to her about how nice it was. And uh, she said, well, why don't you use the one in your car? And I said, I don't have a heated steering wheel. And she said, yeah, let me show you how to turn it on. <laughs> so I actually had one, I just never, knew it was there. My wife's vehicle has heated seats, which are nice, but they do get hot after a little oh. while. Yeah. I just got an update. They're going to be on the first level. Is that first level? You get you soft. Level? You know, oh, wow. in the winter with oh, those yeah. heated seats. Yeah. <coughs> the older we get the nicer it is. Exactly. So we're on Rice Street. We're northbound at Ivy, approaching Arlington. We're in the central district of St. Paul. St. Paul's broken up into three districts, west, central, and east. And central also includes the uh, south of the river, which they call west. Nope. But not. there's west district and there's the west side. <laughs> I don't know. Still trying to figure it it's out. It's a St. Paul thing. It's a St. Paul thing. So. It's a state patrol there. 1538. We have multiple radios going on in here right now. So 
you're going to hear all sorts of chatter. Hi, everyone. People out walking their dogs. Can you have a medic here, David? We covered a, uh, when I was not FTOing on patrol, had a vehicle flee from me. And we ended up covering him right here in this parking lot. Ah. I have to say, I got beat by a minivan. But I was in a traffic squad that had scales in the back, and it was governed and was not very fast. Well, it says that uh, the complainant is sitting in front of the school, and the security at the school won't let him in. So, thirty-three and Oh. So we're going to pull up here and talk to the person in front of the school, and uh, I'm guessing these these are the folks that called here, maybe, and see what's going on. I'm going to assign myself to this call, and hopefully we can resolve whatever the issue is. We'll be back with you. Twenty two sixty one single twenty two six three. Twenty two sixty one tango. Okay. The caller seventeen thirty one Garden Lane regarding a domestic that occurred at sixteen sixty three Garden Lane. So she was attempting to go on a walk, and her mom tried to block her from being able to leave the house. I advised that she gripped the bat, but she did not use it, and then her mom moved and let her leave. Her previous college was a possible PIC call. 2261 Tango, copy. Uh, can you check if uh, parties are separated? Two settling, but my call back and pending power plate six three. Four forty five, clear report. Fifteen forty three. Twenty two six three, you sir. Six three done. Do 
ਵਿੱਚ ਵੇਚ ਰਹੇ ਹੋ left you alone there for a while. We were dealing with a, a juvenile who had left school. He wasn't uh, supposed to, by policy, be allowed back into the school, and the uh, security would not let him in, and he was upset about it, but the principal came out and talked to us, talked to him, and we were able to avert. Yep, come to an agreement, and uh, it was a misunderstanding. Yeah. So, I'm just going to... Mom's going to be at the 66 I'm just going to go ahead and take credit and say that was good police work. It was. Top. Even though it we was didn't top. really do anything. <laughs> we just kind of talked. Yep. But... Um, that's good sometimes I know when I was in the academy when I was a just a baby cop they told us that your strongest tool is your voice and being able to just talk things down de-escalate them and fortunately the uh, both the security and the principal were very amenable yep. to that and also helpful they have they have rules set in place to keep the kids safe and that's completely understandable yeah and it, it was good that the principal explained to them hey we're just trying to keep you guys yep. safe yep. so cute dog there a lot of people out walking their dogs today This week on, I uh, can't remember what night it was, but we had a, a call out in uh, Roseville for a, uh, started out as a domestic where the suspect was threatening his girlfriend and then he had a sword and was threatening her with the sword and when the officers arrived he retreated back into an apartment building and barricaded himself inside the apartment yep. and uh, they talked to him for a while trying to uh, get him to come out and he wouldn't and he started threatening that he was going to start a fire and burn down the building and they could smell some smoke and a fire alarm went off but they were able to determine that it was just a small little fire that had gone out. But then he started threatening that he was going to shoot people. And so it escalated to a SWAT call out. And one of my duties as the 
under sheriff of regional services as I oversee the, the SWAT team. And so we deployed there and uh, tremendous cooperation by everybody involved. Roseville PD officers, of course, that were the first to respond and the um, Metro Transit who assisted with some traffic control and then also providing a couple buses for the other residents that had to be evacuated. We had uh, our negotiators that came and tried to negotiate with him, but it was, uh, <clears throat> he didn't have a phone and they were trying to talk to him through the wall, but it was not very productive. Yep. And uh, eventually we um, were able to use uh, deployment of gas to get him out of the apartment and resolve the situation. He ended up giving up, but uh, it was just a, a testament to the great work that all of our partners do, the SWAT team, but also the local agencies that, that assist. The person just walked down the road. Well, you know. <clears throat> well, it's, it's good to see when everyone comes together. To, they work as a very smooth unit to get everything accomplished. It's it's one of those things that when you're standing from the outside watching, it's really cool to, really cool to look at. It is. Uh, we had our drones. We used our drones, too. And uh, I actually... I don't want to... I don't want to give the suspect credit, per se. But he is the first suspect that we've had that took out a drone that was flying outside his window. He threw a broom at it and took out the drone. <laughs> So the drone had to, uh, it's programmed, if it loses a propeller, that it lands automatically. So fortunately there was not serious damage to that drone, but uh, the drones really help us to maintain a good situational awareness. Um, drones are, they're just a great tool all around. When looking for missing people, uh, helping on perimeters to keep an eye on things. It's they're wonderful to have. They are. It really helps you understand what's going on and where your resources are. Yep. And uh, like you said, looking for a missing person, a missing child. I know we used it one the other day for a missing child that ended up being located safely. But um, they provide a ability that you know we don't have otherwise so. yeah, oh, we didn't clear our call that's my fault let's see what do we want to call it there's not a button to hit for uh, clear call I think you can come in the system. Oh, and I hit the wrong. Here. Yep. Clear, clear call. Advise assist, I think. Advise. Uh, I don't see yep. a. There's all kinds of buttons here that we can use to clear a call. Um, but we're going to hit the advise the assist button because there isn't one for just tremendous police work. <laughs> yeah. Or standing around while the principal and the kid talk to yep. each other. So, everyone's commenting that it's a nice picture today. It's beautiful out. Oh, good, yeah. I'm glad because it looks a little dark, doesn't it, on our screen? But maybe that's something the phone does yep. automatically. But we do have a beautiful city. Um, yes, our streets are in rough shape. <laughs> our our streets, especially the one we just went down, are, are in rough shape. Yes. <clears throat> they, sh they should actually film Jeep commercials yeah. on Rice Street. Yep. So, we're right by the uh, Minnesota State Capitol. Uh, it's off to the left. 
Suzanne said, and no buffering so far. No buffering so far? No buffering. That's good because uh, I was going to start a little bit earlier today, but they had an idea for eliminating the buffering yep. issue that apparently has you been occurring. The board and the a different so that's good to know. I should have mentioned earlier when we were over by Harding High School, I think there's a balloon release. Yes. For the victim of that at 5 o'clock today? I think it's 6. Oh, did they move it yeah. to 6? For Is it <clears> at <throat> Harding? I believe so. All right. So. I'm supposed to give a shout out to Chaska. Okay, shout out to Chaska. Why? Because <laughs> they love it here. Oh, because they love it. Yeah. The city of Chaska? Yeah. Or the, uh, or someone named Chaska? No. So, give us a shout out to Chaska. We love it here. Oh, all right. That's so awesome. Chaska, they had a really good hockey program this year. Yes. If I remember right. They kind of came out of nowhere. Yep. Yeah. Right? I mean, I... Uh, <coughs> I know when my uh, older son got uh, played hockey, we played Chaska, and they were good, but they were nothing like they are now. Yeah. They're, they've really built their program. I'm assuming that their youth program is part of the reason. 2271 right here. And I'll be the first to admit, when I graduated from Tartan many years ago, we never had a good hockey team. Oh. I, uh, I know the feeling. <clears throat> and all these other guys, they talk about going to Hill Murray yep. and Creton and whatever. You know, over here, everybody asks you what high school you went to. Yep. And uh, it's like you get judged. Yes. On, that's why I never tell anyone, but I went to Wyzetta High School, so... And that was before they were powerhouses in football and hockey and yep. whatever else. So this is the Minnesota State Capitol. Beautiful building. Uh, the uh, Congress is in session right now, the legislature. Um, Thursday I'll be testifying there about our bill. It's actually authored by Representative Kelly Muller to allow us to place GPS devices on uh, cars that have been reported stolen. And uh, did you I'll be it? testifying at the, I think it's the Judicial Committee this time. Last time it was the Public Safety Committee. So I think it was... And Melissa said in the UK, they drive on the left. Over here, we drive on what's left. Ah, I like that. <laughs> See, that's the beauty right there. Yes. We get humor from all over the world. Yes. It's those lovely snow plows taking and pulling the snow off and causing ruts. But I'd rather drive on that than the side streets. Yeah, you know that every every year they have a competition to name a snowplow. Mm -hmm. Did you hear what it is this year? It was uh, Blizzo. Blizzo after Lizzo, yes, the singer. There was so, actually multiple ones that they named this year. Oh really? And I can't remember what the rest of them were, but I know Blizzo I was the know. top one. Huh? Blizzo. Well, last year was what Plowy McPlowface. <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> that was stupid. Whatever it was. <laughs> no offense to whoever thought that up. That's a tremendous name for yeah. a snowplow. <laughs> I don't care what they name them as long as they move the snow off the roads. Yes. Yes. And they had uh, Plowy McPlowface was on display at the fair this year. Oh, okay. 
<clears throat> I miss that. So I'm sure Blizzo will be there. Two, two, seven, one, transport. Lizzo, maybe Lizzo will actually come and like sing. My location with the plow. With the plow. Trip on, on top of it. Mileage Ooh, do a concert six, there. Five. Yeah, do a concert. Okay, a I'll tell you, um, I may be old. Well, I am old, but this year I went to the Sticks and Ario Speedwagon. So did I. It was so awesome. Yes, it was. First of all, I'm a huge fan of Sticks. Yep. Styx was my first concert ever. I went to the Pieces of Aid tour. Yep. Um, and uh, and then REO. I was a huge fan as well. So, but that was a fun concert. My 15 year old daughter wanted to go see Styx. Really? Yes. Good for her. Both of them. My 15 year old and my 18 year old are into older music. Good. Really? Early it's, nine, so, five, eight. it's uh <clears throat> it's nice because I can Four, walk eight, in the house seven, somewhere and energy, hear Kansas four, playing drive. or uh, Kansas Mario Speedway. Kansas is coming up yep. soon there's a concert. Yep. I saw Kansas at the old Met Center. We're going to see Stevie Nicks. She comes with uh, with Billy Joel. Oh, that'll be fun. Yep. And then we're also going to see Metallica. Ah, uh, Metallica. Yes, yeah. so, I saw Metallica when they were. Well, I've seen them a few times, but I saw them when they were at U.S. Bank Stadium. They were the first concert yep. ever there, and they hadn't really worked out the acoustics oh, yeah. in there yet, so it maybe wasn't the best. But I couldn't hear for like a week. My wife will tell you I still can't hear. Well, mine will but, tell you the same. Yeah. I, but I, I went to... So, for those of you who don't know, I was a Minneapolis cop and retired and then came over to the sheriff's office to work for Bob Fletcher. And uh, when I was at Minneapolis, I helped run the off-duty at the Metrodome. And Metallica came. It was a day-long concert. Um, it was Metallica was the main act and right before them was Lincoln Park yep and uh, I'm trying to think Mudvayne was there um, trying to think of who some of the other acts were but I thought oh this is going to be we're going to end up you know like in fights oh, yeah. whatever the typical you know it was the most mellow concert there was one fight. Of course, it was down on the floor. Yep. So we had to run down the stairs, yep. break up the fight, and then escort the guys up the stairs. We're going to the uh, Metallica Pantera concert. Ooh, that I've seen, be nice. seen Pan Pantera in concert multiple times. I saw that advertised. I learned a really cool thing about concerts. So if you go to them and it's something you don't really want to listen to it's just gonna be really loud security carries around earplugs oh yeah it was wonderful nice. i've been to a lot of keith urban concerts <laughs> you don't like keith urban I, I like him but when we were down on the floor no. okay all right all right okay up oh, fires fires racing over to help someone here on the tracks it looks like so when we were down on the floor, we had the speaker right above us, and it was loud. So, security came walking up because I was plugging my ears, handed me earplugs. Oh, that was nice of them. That was wonderful. I saw Keith Urban kind of by accident. Yep. So, my wife and I were in Nashville just for a trip. I was there for a work trip for some training, and... We were walking in downtown Nashville, and we saw all these people going into the Bridgestone Arena. And we're like, what's going on in there? We don't know. We saw scalpers. So we asked them, and they said, oh, it's the uh, it's a charity concert to raise money for the victims of the, the uh, shooting in Las Vegas at the Jason Aldean yep. concert. I think it was Route something. Bro, five, four, three, anyway, so... We 
bought tickets from the scalper and went in. It was the coolest show I've ever yep. seen. So it was all kinds of artists, that country artists, and they would sing three songs, then the stage would turn and it would go to the next yep. act. And it was everybody from Keith Urban, Chris Stapleton, Reba McIntyre, uh, Lady Antebellum, who's now Lady A. Yep. Um, so it looks like the fire department's out with a male that's having a medical issue there on the light rail tracks. Um, the so. Metro Transit PD are there. And uh, anyway, it was super cool yeah. to see all these different acts. It's another St. Paul fire there. <clears throat> no, I mean, I, I like Keith Urban. It's just we were directly under a speaker. And it was too loud. Yes. Yes. Checking for downtown theater central traffic can start to 10 4th Street East in the lobby of the commercial building. Special complaint with some people being fentanyl in the lobby and now they're trying to fight with the maintenance guy. That's not good. No. So we're on University Avenue. It runs east and west from Minneapolis through the University of Minnesota and to St. Paul. And there are also light rail tracks. The green line runs down University Avenue as well. So you can hop on the light rail and ride back and forth between the cities. And you can go all the way to Target Field and watch a baseball game when it's not snowy out. But you can go to U.S. Bank Stadium, yep. watch the Vikings. But not this One, time four, of year. Nine, no. <laughs> well, <laughs> not not when the playoffs or the Everything Super Bowl are done. done. On and uh, all the way, you can hop on a. You can change trains at U.S. Yep. Bank Stadium and go out to the Mall of America or the airport. Yep. How many times have you ridden the light rail? <sighs> I've probably ridden the light rail about ten times. Right never been on it really you've never been on it no. um i've taken it to the airport um i've taken it to i came down here to the uh st patrick's so day parade yep. um on it <clears throat> once um i've taken it to a twins game two seven three copy we're actually attending from that call of two six one. But I have to admit, I'm I don't like I like driving myself. <coughs> yes. There's just a sense of freedom. Yes. Being able to come and go when you please, and if there's an emergency, being able to leave. Yep. That's always a nice thing. We had uh, years ago taken the girls to. Uh, Twins game, and we were sitting in the left field bleachers. Well, I didn't realize that the brick wall that's behind it just kind of holds the heat. It was miserably hot. Really? The kids were just they get to the point where they were laying their heads down on their laps because they're like, oh, I'm no. done. So we went up and got ice cream and was like, you know what? I think it's time to go. Yeah. Just it was miserable. Well, I went, I actually worked, um, was fortunate enough to be asked to work for the NHL at the uh, Stadium Series uh, hockey game. Yep. That with the uh, Wild and the Blackhawks, right? No, wait, St. Louis Blues. Blues. Yep. Yeah, it was the Wild and the Blues. I worked <laughs> the Wild and the Blackhawks at the TCF Bank Stadium several years before but that wild and blues uh game was by far the coldest i've ever been in my life <laughs> it was like 15 below regular temp the wind was blowing it was pretty pretty bad yeah pretty cold that was the one thing about working the 
the last Vikings game of the season here is we were inside and it was nice and oh that was nice we were outside for a little bit but we were inside of a tent so it wasn't too bad but well that's good not a not a big fan of standing outside in the cold when it's that cold no and I don't care how good of socks you buy <laughs> or boots your my feet still get cold I see all these kids now. It's popular, you know. They get these <coughs> Canada Canada Goose jackets. Yep. Um, that are like they're like twelve hundred bucks, I think, or yeah. more. Um, but apparently, they really keep you warm. I see a lot of people walking around with those vests that have batteries in them that heat up too. Oh yeah. And those look nice, but. If I'm gonna wear something, it's gonna be a jacket. And what if it? What if you got electrocuted? Right? Would it be like uh, getting tased? <laughs> I hope not. So, <laughs> so we're out uh, driving around. We're in the Central District. We're on Thomas Avenue. We're in an area where uh, we pick up a lot of stolens from time to time. Uh, in uh, Frog Town here, it's called. And uh, I don't know why it's called Frog Town. Do you know? No. Yeah, we're going to have to look into that. Because no. it's... St. Agnes right here. Yep, St. Agnes. Where my, my niece went there. My wife graduated from there. Oh, really? <clears throat> yep. I, and her uh, brother and sister. The other sister graduated oh. from, I believe, St. Bernard's. Okay. Which is, is no longer, right? Yes. Yeah. So St. Agnes, my niece Danielle went there. She's now a, I don't know what her title is at Target. She's a big shot okay. at Target. Um, I have uh, two nieces and a nephew that go there as well. Uh, uh, tenth grader and then got an eighth grader this year. But that's my nephew. And then uh, his sister goes here as well, and I can't remember what grade she's in. So St. Agnes here is a parochial school, Catholic yep. school. Uh, one of the, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Like one of the, the uh, St. Paul tradition schools. Uh, let's see here. Linda said, Frog Tom was named due to the large number of French that lived there years ago. French. I didn't know. Interesting. For Did they call them frogs? Or? I don't know. I don't know. Interesting. Someone well, else said it used to be a swamp full of frogs. That I believe. Yeah. If you look at the roads right now. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, interesting. We're going to have to get to the bottom of this. We may have to call the Historical Society. I do know that the Frogtown youth football team Anybody went to, like, the... Mini ha ha I'm trying to catch up to one. Uh, we're not I'm not too far. I'm to your east. Which way are they going? Or eastbound on Mini ha ha to Earl. It's a black two-door Solera. Is that a Toyota? It's all kind of in place. Just trying to run it. Look like one of the Asian guys we're looking for. One of the cat team uh, sergeants is uh, behind the car. They're trying to follow and run over on the east side. We could hardly be further away, but we'll kind of start heading that way. Just in case. You know, I took my truck out of uh, auto four-wheel drive today yeah. and put it in two-wheel drive. And now I'm thinking twice about that. <laughs> I may have to go back. I just slipped around a little there. That's the nice thing about my Jeep is it's, I think it's always all-wheel drive. Oh, all right. That's nice. This thing... Uh, will chew up gas if 
And cell phone for me. I have seen it here. Keep it in four wheel drive. Yep. Well, that's the the SRT. Was yeah, it didn't continue. He's going on. Gas too. No, I thought you might be up in front of me here, but there's just too many cars. So I think he's still trying to get a plate on that. <clears throat> so we're heading that way, but uh, we're not going to bust lights or turn on our lights and siren because, according to Nancy, the name Frogtown likely comes from the fact that the neighborhood was developed over over several swamps and marshes and were filled in over time. Archbishop John Ireland referred to the area as Froshburg or Frog City. Because of the many frogs in the area originating from the swamps. Yeah, I, I like that. Man. Sounds good I to like me. That. And later on, they named that road we were on in front of the state right, capitol as John Ireland, Ireland yes. Boulevard. Yes. So. Yeah, it comes back clear out of Wisconsin. <laughs> so the car, the car they were following, comes back clear out of Wisconsin. I really, this guy just changed lights without signal. Um, our, uh, celebrate Valentine's Day in other countries? I don't know. We have people on. Let us know from other countries. Yes, pothole dodging is a sport in Minnesota. If pothole dodging was an Olympic sport, I could Oof. maybe... We could medal. Uh, yeah, I could... I'd be at least a silver medalist. The UK celebrates, and Australia celebrates Valentine's Day. Oh, that's good. That's good to know. Share the love. And Newfoundland, Canada. 
Paris. Paris. They, do they in, have it? They do in Japan. Ooh, in Japan. Tracy has lived there for four years. We had someone watching us from Japan. Wow. And Slovakia, Hungary, and the Czech Republic. Hallmark's making a killing on this Valentine's oh, Day. Yeah. <laughs> We should do a card, the card business. We should have, we need a holiday, um, like, yeah. celebrate your favorite police officer. Yeah. Okay. And then we'll make the cards up. <laughs> Sell them. What, what would it say? Like, roses are red, violets are blue, don't write me a ticket. Because I love you. There you How's go. Alright. 1667. Somebody copyright that. W107. 1619. So there's a place we staffed up at Woodbury called Crumble Cookies. Oh. I, I think it's cookies. Killer. But yeah. we, we were staffing and getting food next door, and this was Saturday night. The line was out the door. Really? Yeah. I don't know if they were having some sort of sale or... I don't know. <coughs> what was going on. They but definitely are good cookies. Crumble cookies. Thank you for something. Went inside and came out and the, the line hadn't moved an inch. Jeez. Just advise you of a guilty that's impending on my drive to north of Fort Church for a male that's in the middle of the road for a child's head vehicle that they drive by. People like your, your greeting card. Oh, good. Yeah. I'm glad I could. That was just off the top of my head. I could probably come up with some other rhymes. We something we have to come up with one that rhymes with uh, Durango. Tango. Tango. We'll have to think this one through. That's a tough one. <laughs> so maybe Pat, Pat or Bob could help us with that one. Yes. Since I, I'm in a Tahoe, that's a little easier to rhyme. But Mike is a poet. Who knew? <laughs> Who knew? they did to drop to fix the dropouts is working very well oh good as as buffering, so. I'm glad I know uh, the smartest man in the <coughs> sheriff's office Kyle Mestad was working on it feverishly with our entire uh, technology team which I think is Andy too yep <laughs> <laughs> those two uh, Kyle and Andy uh, just do a tremendous Kyle job and Kyle just told me, hey, bring your phone up into the office. I need you to... arriving, uh, I'm going to change some settings, and we'll see if this helps, and it did. That's good. So... I supervised I'll, Andy years ago in the jail. Such a nice guy. He is. How many... He's got, like, two kids now, yep. right? Well, I know he had... They had twins, I thought. Oh, so maybe he has three. So he might have three now. I don't know. All these guys are having kids, except me and you. Oh, no, no, I'm too old to have any more kids. I, I have five. I don't need any more. I have two. Not good. And, uh, but all these young deputies in the cat team are having kids. Yeah. Right and left. I warned my wife when she was down the other day, don't drink the water. Because <laughs> I don't know what's in there. When I got to the unit, I was finding out that everyone was having babies. I'm like, what? What's going on? Mine's uh, mine are 18 and almost 16. So, uh, that's yeah. Oof. My youngest is 16. Cosmetics are responding to 1900 here and half of East Room One Two Three. 
female. Want to give give a shout out to uh, Garrett Johnson, who uh, was a football coach or is a football coach at Irondale High School, who uh, announced that he's no longer going to be coaching. <clears throat> Want to thank him for the years of service to our kids, uh, for helping them not only the, the boys that play football, but all the kids that are around. Um, and uh, good luck in his future. He's got young, at least two young kids, I think. So uh, I think he's probably going to take a little time to spend with his kids. But I know my boys uh, really liked him when he coached. So good luck to you, Garrett. Patrick Overman said five kids. Was the TV broken? <laughs> And then, uh, yes, the TV was broken. Nathan said the cat team is making the kitten squad. <laughs> well, we have to replicate the squad. We got to go to the younger. Yes, we got to have generations of cat team members. So, um, I today I got from our we our cat team is uh, partially funded by a grant that we received through the Department of Commerce uh, to <coughs> help reduce auto theft and carjackings and uh, so they provide us with funding for three of our cat team members and investigators as well as overtime and equipment and so we have to report back right we have to show that we actually are uh, giving them a return on their investment and the uh I talked to our grant guy today, and he got the stats for this last year. Our cat team this last year made 403 cases. They investigated 403 cases. They executed 62 search warrants, 210 arrests, 258 vehicles recovered, which equates to $11.8 million in value of vehicles that were recovered. Um, and, and perhaps most impressive, you know, those are all outputs, but the outcome is carjackings are down 40%. Yes, we're down 40%. That's unbelievable. And uh, our clearance rate is, is right around 40% as well, which is a national um, leader. leader and uh, clearance rates for carjackings. Most places it's 10% or less. Yep. And uh, so <clears throat> our folks do a great job supported by our patrol deputies, our intelligence unit, our, you know, you name it, everybody pitches in. And this was our primary focus over the last year was reducing carjackings and auto thefts because we saw that as our highest risk type of crime and they've been tremendously successful. We got a group of very dedicated people down there that yeah. do phenomenal work. Friend Webster for Tuesday's election looking for a great stand in Honda. Kevin. Job on lowering the carjacking is the car theft percentage down also. Yeah, the car theft percentage is down also, and I but I don't have that number with me. Um, part of the problem is differentiating the auto thefts from other types of property crimes, but they are down. And uh, if you compare um, our stats just as a control, because people will say, oh, well, maybe. That's just a natural thing. Uh, just across the river in Hennepin County, they did not see those type of declines. They did see a slight decline in carjackings, but their auto thefts were up. <coughs> and um, so we're pretty proud of the work that our, our folks do. Yes. The gray Toyota. Never seen a group work more cohesively together than 
right. The cat team and the Intel unit. I agree. So we that forty percent down compared to the same time the previous year means that thirty nine fewer people were carjacked. Um, that's 39 fewer victims that were assaulted, had a gun pointed at them, had their vehicles taken, um, had to pay a deductible for whatever damage was done to their vehicle because they're always damaged. Yep. And um, so, thank goodness, 39 fewer people this last year were there. And hopefully we can reduce that even further. I'm confident we can. Yep. Agreed. I remember getting in arguments with people back when I was at Minneapolis. I ran the Northside Precinct for five years and I would always set an actual goal saying we're going to reduce this category of crime by this much this year. <clears throat> and I had people tell me, don't do that, don't do that, because if it goes up, you're, you know, they're, they're going to, you know, blame you, and you're going to have to take the negative credit. And I'm like, I'm willing to do that. We have to have a goal to shoot for. The police can make a difference. Obviously, there's a lot of stuff that prevention and intervention can affect but the reality is we, we can make a difference by, you know, aggressively enforcing crime or assertively enforcing crime and then trying to intervene with the people we arrest to ensure they're not going to be doing it again. Yep. And that's where I think we've been successful. It's not just our arrests of these young folks but it's getting them into our ambassadors and our navigators that help work with their families to get them the type of assistance that they need we're heading north across Larpeter on White Bear into the city of Maplewood car has temp plates over regular plates. Is that suspicious as a stolen? Not necessarily. Nope. I mean, because some dealers just put on the temp plates on top of the old plates. Um, <clears throat> so as long as the temp plate registers to that vehicle, it, I, mean, it, I don't think so. It might. It, it would make me run the plate. Yep. We had uh, so, a couple Fridays ago, we were out, myself and Sergeant Marson, and uh, White Bear Lake had an individual at the gas station that had a temp take over their plates just to, to block them so they could do a gas drive off. Ah, so, but go. White Bear was on it, took care of it quickly, and made him pay for the gas. Because the real plates were underneath the temp take. And just so everybody knows, there's no longer any... There's only one place a temp tag can be, and that's on top of your wherever your license plate's supposed to be affixed. Yep. Uh, you can't put them in the back window. There's no longer any yellow temp stickers. So for those of you who think you're going to fake us out, that doesn't work anymore. There's one place and uh, it's really helped to eliminate some of the fraud yes one of the things I, I encourage people to do is take pictures of your vehicle with the license plates so if your vehicle does get <coughs> stolen you have it right there in your phone you can show the officers here's the Here's what the car looks like. Here's the plate. Yep. <clears throat> There's a bald eagle flying up I there. I, I think that's a sign. I don't know what it's a sign of. Great but police work. Ooh, great police work. I like it. It might be a sign that there's a fish. <laughs> on the shore of one of these lakes that's frozen over. Or a dead rabbit. Or a dead rabbit. Probably 
Nancy wants to know if we know any officers in Michigan. I do not. In Michigan, I do know a few uh, in Detroit um, that are part of the Detroit gang unit. I do a lot of gang work. That's kind of been my <coughs> background. And so I know some of them that are involved with the Midwest Gang Investigators Association and with the Michigan State Police. I had the pleasure of about two years ago going to Flint, Michigan to uh, do some training for uh, officers from that area um, at, I think it was Wayne State. Um, I, I'm trying to remember the name. It was a college, Not a community nice. college, but um, <coughs> I'm part of a big a, big organization of over 1,200 gang investigators from 12 states across the Midwest um, that share information and we meet and do training um, to help make us better at investigating gangs. New message. New message. 9 or so we're in the city of Maplewood. We're at White Bear Avenue, okay, approaching uh, Beam okay. Avenue. A uh, busy area for us. We're going by the costume shop. Have you ever been in there? I have actually. What? How is it? Is it's it cool? cool? I bought when the Fright Farm was going on because I dressed as the clown outside. Ooh. I went there and bought a clown outfit. Like a scary clown or yeah. a fun clown? No, I was a scary clown. I carried an axe. I had the blood all over my face. Ooh, that's... So anybody that was ever at the Fright Farm that remembers the scary clown that was outside, that was me. I did that for, jeez, 14, 15 years. Really? Yep. <coughs> I'm... I'm Halloween's my favorite holiday. Uh -huh. I go all out. I decorate my yard. They have really fog machines and strobe lights and music. And I think my wife thinks I'm crazy, but well, it was uh, she's still married. Yeah, I know. So something that my my mom always did when I was younger, and I just kind of have carried on that tradition and made it bigger. I have a neighbor that's a funeral home director, and he he does it all up. Usually one of his kids lies in a casket oh, yeah. outside and then, of course, waits for little kids to come up and then sits up in the casket. <coughs> we had uh, we had some friends that had the same thing going on. We could have a casket outside. Uh, had a couple of hearses. Wow. They, that hearse that was at the freight farm, they sold that, didn't they? Yeah, it went to auction. Huh. That would have been kind of fun to have. Yes. It had a giant, what was it, like a skeleton ghost thing that popped up out of it. Oh, that was uh, that was a prop that we wore. Really? I, during some of the uh, 
parades that we had, I, I was in the back wearing that thing. That thing was uh, heavy. What Sat on your shoulders. Had a um, part that went down over your hood, and, or your hood, your head, and strapped to your head so when you turned, it made the head turn up there. I know we had a... Uh, yep. There's been a few people in the back fight into the that car too. up there, too. Yep. What am I doing here? So we've had uh, several recent incidents of stolen U-Hauls and people fleeing from the police in those. So we're running the plate on this one. Minnesota, I think it's Arizona. Oh, yeah. I, Arizona, I should know better. <clears throat> I should know the difference between Arizona and Minnesota. Camp, right? Well, At least in the winter, done. 37216. New message. So that's clear. It's by the Richfield Public Works parking lot just off the ramp. Um, so for uh, those of you that are aware, the White Bear Lake officer that was uh, shot, Ryan Cheek, McDonald's on uh, Wednesday, February 15th is going to be donating 25% of its sales from 4.30 to 6.30 p.m. to help uh, his family and pay for medical bills. So if uh, you're out at uh, the two addresses, I believe, are 4950 Highway 61 next to Rudy's and 2070 County Road E East by the high school, those two McDonald's between the hours of 4.30 and 9.30 on Wednesday, February 15th, they're donating 25% of all sales towards uh, Officer Sheik's family. His medical bills. That's awesome. I, I got the pleasure of seeing him the other day. He came to the state patrol's annual uh, award ceremony, and I was there uh, because one of our analysts, Sanjay Sivaraj, was getting a, an award yep. for his tremendous work on, on the street racers that were causing us a lot of trouble last year. And uh, Officer Sheik was there, kind of sat quietly in the back because one of his partners was getting an award. Nice. And, uh, but Donna wants me to tell a little bit about myself. Donna, uh, Deputy James Chin, I worked with... Uh, the intel unit right now. I've been with Ramsey County for a little over 19 years. Uh, I started back in 2003 as a correctional officer. Um, spent time in the jail. Working line staff was promoted. Uh, I was the afternoon shift supervisor for about seven years. Um, decided to go back to school. Try to see law enforcement on the other side. Um, Sheriff Fletcher hired me again. As a deputy, as a deputy, um, and I've worked patrol, transports, courts. Um, I started the Zoom Court unit during COVID, and then uh, transferred down to the Intel unit. So that's uh, a little bit about me. Anytime someone says I spent some time in the jail, I want to ask them when they got paroled. Well, it was kind of. Every day I got a conditional release to go home for a little bit, and oh, I go back okay. for eight hours. So, so. it's like a work release. It was a program, program. kind of. All right, I see. And then my my sentence was completed when I left the jail. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, I have a great deal of respect for our corrections officers. Yep. You spend time in the jail. It's a tough job. You're 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 locked inside a building 
with, you know, people that are at the worst points in their lives for the most part, or their life is always at the worst part. Yep. And uh, they're not always the kindest people to be around. <coughs> no. And uh, we have just a tremendous professional staff, and uh, a lot of them are there because yeah. they're going to school to be yep. uh, deputies. And so yeah, if you're if you're a, a young or even an older person who's interested in law enforcement or corrections. We're always hiring, uh, and uh, the good thing is we have the ability to, um, <coughs> once you finish your schooling, to transfer you over yep. uh, to become a deputy. So many of our deputies come through the jail, and because of the experience they have, talking to people, de-escalating situations, it makes them much better law enforcement officers. Yes. I met some of the greatest people in my life working in the jail with them. Parked up and once I left and we've stayed in contact with many of them. Uh, a lot of them are still in the jail. And they make a career out of it, which that was my intent when I started as well, but decided to change it up. So had I not got that itch, I would still probably be working in the jail as well. It's a, it's a busy place. It's you, You'll meet people on their worst days, and you'll meet some people that just made mistakes. You, you, you kind of deal with all, the whole spectrum of the criminal element in there. It's Some people got a, you know, made a mistake and decided to drive after having too many drinks. And you have people who are in there for murder. It's you run the whole gamut, and you get to. It's. I've never had a job where I could see that I had this amount of stuff. I didn't hear what he said. Hear that either. All right here. So right back Wait here. Wait a minute, I saw him. We ran that way. We did. That's a, you got to take a call. Hello? Yep, we're looking at it right now. Back in the key back, not on file. Clear all squads except for four six. So is it on Wasabi? Yep. We so we got a call in the area that we're in um, of a person with a gun inside of a car. We're really close here. We're gonna see if we can uh, locate that individual. We're in the plate when we run Wiper Avenue. And then it went in. It's even still in there. Keep back I'm going to go. I'm going to go through the back way into there. No, we deleted. We could delete it out of there. So we're going to go uh, kind of the back way into this call and see if uh, we can locate this vehicle. What's the description you got there? It's a white Kia with Colorado plates. Uh, this goes all the way 
So we're looking for a white Kia with Colorado plates. Back in here. See your hands. See your hands. Keep them up. See your hands up. Turn around. 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 Turn I heard around five, so you should be in it pretty shortly here. Two six three copy, thank you.
your incident has been updated. Hey, why don't you go to the south lot of the city hall? I have an off duty there that's at a silver city. I just came screaming in there. It's parked in there. George Nora Victor, 768. I'm heading that way as well. Uh, what was the address? 188. 1-0-8-0-1, Town Square, Drive, Northeast, Star City Hall, South Lot. Yeah. Yeah, we should be good. I thought I had a gun box, but I don't. You guys have one? I got some. Plus 5-3-1, I'm coming from the skyways. What's the description in case I run into a person? Are you there a chance that they just called in asking for medics at the same location? I'm from if I just got here. Can you add municipal license plate for health? I can't. Can you add Mike X-ray 583? So we're uh, we're out uh, with this car. We we're trying to determine if the car is stolen. It's coming back not on file, but there's a loaded gun with an extended magazine, loaded with hollow points, and about 300 fentanyl pills um, here. So we're in the process of just trying to determine out what's going on and who's going to handle what. Maplewood's got. All their finest out here, so uh, you might be able to see that bag of pills. So it looks like we have well over a thousand fentanyl pills as well as a bag that looks like about a maybe a half ounce of crack cocaine and a scale. Incident has been updated. 
I'll start towards the accident. Copy Skillman Avenue and Bradley for an accident at Yeah, we should, well, we, I just self-assigned to your game so, so it'll be on it. Should, it should be, we both are on so it should be easy to come Yeah, alright, and then we'll just do statements. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and start with the statements. Yeah, I'm going to Thirty-five. Replacing fifty oh seven at the Apple Store till nineteen hundred. Post is one six six oh eight. Should we have a Five Five on. I see that there's a fight call at all right we'll be out here for just a, a minute more before we leave and we'll kind of explain to you what's going on but just so you know um we got a gun we got dope we're still not sure on the car, but we'll figure it out. North Fair Wheeler shoplifters that are putting items in their backpack and their vehicle just went outside to pick them up. Updated. The gray Honda Pilot, Kilo Alpha Sierra 886. 5283 Debbie. 5281, 52, 85, Tango. 5281. 5281, Tango. Alarm at City Cargo and Storage, 3080 Long Lake, covering West Motion. There was a key holder that didn't have the proper code. 5281, Cop. 5285, Tango, Cop. 5183. 5183. Couple descriptions for you. The first one's a white female in her 50s, black jacket, white sandals, red socks. The other one's a white female, 20s, 5 foot, wearing all black, black jacket. Fifty two eighty five Tango. We're out of the Dollar Tree. License plate. King Adams Ham. Eight eight six. If someone could replace us on the alarm. Fifty two eighty five Tango. 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 Fifty two eighty
Well, I'm just got canceled late one evening, Claire. Show you one even clear. Okay, one copy. Could you? Hey, County Cars. Uh, Admin's aware of the issues with their turret. NTIT returns. They're working on it. So hopefully that'll get fixed too. I just started to go back through. County 2518. Copy. 15 arrived. Another for protection checkout. Copy. I did yourself here, right? I'm making a question. Crazy. Everyone's correct, Morgan. Something else. 5280, right? Crazy enough. Five. Five, two, seven. Five, seven. I didn't run that occurred we'll yesterday. Little Santa Road and 35 Robert, cars on the way into the back of the corner house. So we'll be in Logan Department the way police work supposed to go yes but here here's the thing none of this would have been possible without the citizen that reported yes this um, that's the key yes everything was okay and you saw the <clears throat> amount of narcotics that were on the hood of the vehicle that was a large amount yes. of fentanyl pills, M-Box 30 pills, and 
I haven't seen crack cocaine like that in a while. And then he did it. Heavy. Supposedly is making yeah. a comeback crack is. Yep. And he had a uh, loaded firearm with the serial number scratched off underneath the seat as well. So that uh, that whole stop went rather well. As well as it could be considering we had a firearm loaded with an extended magazine and uh, um, with the serial number obliterated. Get your cuffs. Oh, my cuffs. Do you have a cover ball? Are they asking? No, you. I forgot them. Yeah. Boy. Well, I got to go back and get my cuffs. But I'm going to let this car come by us. But, uh. It's. It's always a good day when it goes well when you have a firearm involved and um, someone who's potentially on narcotics. I gotta run and grab my handcuffs. Mr. Armstrong, this male does not have access to a vehicle. However, he was on the phone with a friend. He drives a red Ford Taurus. I've been up ready for a ride. 6333, uh, see flight is available, and after the first squad gets there to talk to the victim, please start setting up the perimeter. Flight's not available. <laughs> I had to go back and get my handcuffs that were on the prisoner there, the inmate, or the arrestee. What do we call him at this point? Arrestee. Arrestee. Um, so interestingly, about a month and a half, two months ago, I was out working with Bob and Pat on a Friday night, and I stopped a car, and... The guy driving the car had a PC pickup out for a shooting out of the city of St. Paul. And uh, we placed him under arrest. St. Paul came and took him. That was the same guy that we just arrested now with the gun and the dope. <coughs> that was all. Quite a bit of dope. But. You got that dope off the street, that gun off the street. That's a good thing. 
and a bad guy. Yes. Off the street. So it's a good thing, I'll bet, that we came up this back way because had he seen that squad, he would have fled. Yep. You guys click available. Is it on the way for the I'll put it right back Yes, yeah, smart. What's that? Just click available. It takes you off the call. You don't have to put anything in there. Oh, you're real good. You are good. See, I learn every time. <laughs> Get you youngsters here. But a couple of uh, summers ago, we spent a lot of time back in this complex because some of our um, youngsters that were doing auto thefts and carjackings were living back in here. They've all moved out now, but so fortunately I knew there was a back way into that complex and, and obviously I didn't because I thought you were driving into a dead end. Well, Learned I'm glad new. I had you to warn me though, but then uh, but had we not come in the back way, he'd have been able to flee out and <coughs> I think we both surprised him fast yep. enough to where he decided it was better to give up. Trail seven. I had an orange Kia Soul pass me. I lost somewhere around the winter in case, but it was Gulf. My. I'm going to mute you for just a second. I hate doing this, but I have to. Oh, that's fine. All right. Sorry about that. I just, you know, I always got to check with my partners and see if they're ready to quit yet <laughs> after playing with me. Um, but he said he'll stick around yep. and stick around with me. So we are going to go over to the balloon release uh, at uh, Harding High School for the young man, Devin Scott, that was killed there. You know, I, any gun that we can get off the street is is good. Yes. That was, it's a gun that's not going to shoot somebody, that's not going to rob somebody, that's not going to carjack somebody, um, and uh, it's always nice to get that off the street. But then when you compound that with probably over a thousand uh, fentanyl pills um, and <clears throat> what looked like about a quarter to a half ounce of crack cocaine. Um, that's a nice... That's a, that's a win right there. Nice win. And again, all because a citizen saw something that made him nervous and got a hold of dispatch. <coughs> yes. Yeah, no, sorry, I'm not, I'm not Pat. Someone thought that Pat was riding with you. Oh, <coughs> Pat, Pat's kind of picky. Yeah. He's, I couldn't get him to ride with me. <laughs> That's not true. I think Pat would ride with you. Pat would ride with me for sure. But we want people to get to meet some of the other uh, folks for a little bit. I've had a little bit more... Uh, stuff going on than we did last Wednesday, so <clears throat> keeps. Well, just hang with me. Yeah, it just happens. I don't know why. Obviously. <laughs> You're a gotta let my wife know. And be tied up for a little while. Pretty sure my wife knows because I think her and the kids are probably watching. 
and my I know, my sister in law asked what time I was going live today, and I gave her my pat answer, which is I'm not sure uh, <laughs> because I never know when things happen. Messages from people that are watching. <clears throat> what about the car? The car will. Uh, That'll get towed. <clears throat> They'll uh, do a more thorough search of it as well. Um, that vehicle came back to it's it's a rental, so it's, it sounds like it was a rental that was just never returned. <laughs> So yeah, we did, we're, they're not really sure what's up with the car, so they'll figure that out. Maplewood, by the way, um, we were in the city of Maplewood, as we said. Um, almost everybody you saw there, uh, at least at the beginning, were Maplewood officers, yep. um, and then um, and a Maplewood sergeant, and then our CAT team also came uh, and backed us all up and assisted in Maplewood because it was their call originally and we were assisting them. They said they would take uh, all the evidence and process it and uh, also uh, do book him in and then we will uh, do reports. But we don't have to do those right away. We'll wait till they get theirs in and then we will add what we call a, a narrative a case narrative to theirs uh, explaining what we did and what we saw <coughs> so um and then the case he'll he'll get booked into the ramsey county jail yep and uh then investigators will go try to uh, talk to him and then at that point he will either be charged in custody or released pending charges I'm guessing he'll be charged oh, yeah. in, in custody and the already and our violent crime yeah. enforcement team may possibly go try to interview him as well yep. um, so no it's not Jim Moody in the car with, with Mike. <laughs> Jim Moody? I won't let him in the car because he wants to bring his parrot with He's. I told him, you cannot bring your parrot in the car with me because the. I heard what your parrot did to your TV. <laughs> his parrot pecked out the screen on his TV. Oh, seriously? Yeah. So. We have a, a little parakeet. Do you Bird. have a parakeet? Yep. Does it ever? Is it in a cage or yes. does it fly around? In the no, house? it's it's in a cage. He's uh, he's a cool bird. Uh, it's my daughter's bird, but he responds to my voice when I get home. Oh, he <coughs> does. Yeah. Because uh, I'll I'll go and take him out of the cage and hold him for a little bit. And does he ever fly away? No. My my daughter will have him out once in a while, and she's just laying watching TV, and the bird will sit there with her and watch TV. Wow. And when I come into a room, it'll, it'll fly right to me laying on my shoulder. What's its favorite show to watch? You know, um, parakeets. Parakeets? Because I put other parakeets on on YouTube. <laughs> he sits on there and he puts his feet up on my phone and pecks at it. Oh, geez. But he ends up stopping the... I stopping thought maybe the it was. What was the Tweety Bird and <laughs> the cat? Yeah. Sylvester the cat. Sylvester the cat. I want to give a shout out to my sister-in-law, Kathy, 
who's from Washington, D.C. area, who's in town visiting us, and she's our a first time watcher. So, um, and uh, <clears throat> this way she gets to see what I actually do for a living. Yep. So, I, I think before this, she probably thought I sleep for a living because. <laughs> I sleep in in the morning. But, I slept in, uh, slept in this weekend for the first time in a very long time. Uh, it was nice. My sister-in-law Molly always watches and Mark Kelly watches. <coughs> and uh, my son Danny I know always watches. My yep. son Jimmy sometimes. I think watches, if depends on if he has to work. And... Uh, it's nice to know you named your son after me, though. I you did, know? yeah, yeah. That's I good. named my kid after you, for sure. <laughs> um, and, uh... So now we're just heading down to Harding High School, where the balloon release is... My son Tyler also watches, and his girlfriend Shauna watch, and Nicholas watches. I guess my whole family watches. My mom watches. She oftentimes will send me messages um, or comments on the stream. And, uh, which is good. It's good to know that your mom's still keeping an eye out on you. Yep. My uh, my mom watched occasionally before she passed away. My dad watched occasionally before he passed away as well. So it's uh, they were always always commenting on it. My brother-in-law Judd is watching right now and just sent me a message that it was a another win, good win for the good guys. Win for the good guys. Good guys one, bad guys zero. Yes. So, that's good. As long as we can keep that score in our favor. Yes. So. There's nothing better than having the support of your loved ones. Um, you know, because our, our job isn't easy. Um, and, uh, Knowing that you have people at home that support you and are rooting for <coughs> you, and praying for you, um, it is really nice. Yes. <clears throat> and that understand when uh, you're, you know, running late. And my wife Ann was a police officer for 19 years, so she gets it. My wife is not a police officer and never has been. <laughs> my my daughters show interest in it, um, but we'll see what direction they go once they get into to college. My oldest is going to Hamlin next year, so uh, Hamlin. She's trying to decide right now what she wants to do. <laughs> the sheriff went to Hamlin. He's always talking about playing football at Hamlet. Yep. So, I spoke to a criminal justice class there once. Does that count? <laughs> <coughs> I drove through the parking lot, so I, I always tell people I went to Harvard. I went and walked around and left. <laughs> While I was in Boston with my wife. Yeah. And I think our daughter was just a little baby at the time, like like weeks old. She was probably less than a month and she went to her first Red Sox game. Oh, nice. Sherry, the parakeet's bird's name is Bert. Bert? Yep. Oh. That's what my daughter named him. It's not Big Bird. No, it's just Bert. Bert. We have Bert, the bird, we have uh, Loki the cat, and Finley the dog. 
Uh, I have two two dogs, Luna and Gypsy, and uh, they're both uh, rescues from Puerto Rico. And uh, a friend of ours was fostering them, and then got us to uh, foster and then finally adopt. Yeah, well, we one we wanna we adopted and then she suckered us into fostering another one. Yep. And of course we ended up adopting that one too. But they're a great pair. They keep each other company. That happens. We uh our dog was a rescue from Co- through Coco's heart. Coco's heart? Yep. We got her about seven years now. Okay. We had a purebred uh, golden retriever who was a wonderful dog, and we didn't know how we were going to be able to replace her, but Finley's been a really good dog as well. <clears throat> That's good. Yeah, we had a we had a chocolate lab. Sarge. Sarge. Uh, Sarge. Yep. Right. And then uh, Sarge passed away. It didn't take us long <laughs> to get the itch to have another dog. Yep. My, so. my neighbor growing up, they had a retired police dog that was named Sergeant. She was a, or he was a big German Shepherd. Uh, then the neighbor right across the street had a Rottweiler named Butkus. And uh, that dog wow. was huge. So that dog would get out of the backyard and come down and... We always had a screen door, and the dog would come through, and my mom would always feed it bologna. So it got to the point where it would come and knock down the screen door and come in and sit on her lap to get some just bologna. waiting for bologna. See. Well, this is Harding High School here in front of us. I see uh, there's a. Uh, St. Paul squad sitting up here on the hill, and I'm sure they're doing the same thing we are, which is just making sure that we can have a good, safe event. Um, and uh, we'll just be checking out the area. How you doing? Good. We were asked to just come and be in the area, so... Perfect. All right. So one of the things that uh, we often do when there's an incident like this is we will go into the area when there's uh, um, a memorial or they do balloon releases a lot and whatever and just make sure they can have a safe event without uh, other people coming and causing problems. So we'll just be up in this area. Looks like St. Paul's already on it. So, you know, St. Paul has that Sergeant Fuzz. Yes. Right? The dog. I don't, I don't know what kind of dog it is. I mean, it looks like a little German Shepherd, but... It's like a little fuzzy it's thing. Just no, I don't know. A mixture of But here's the question I have, right? <clears throat> the dog's been around for... That dog for, like, maybe 10 years. Mm-hmm. Shouldn't it at least be a lieutenant by now? You would think so. I mean, that, the Sergeant Fuzz should be getting promoted. Maybe uh, Commander Fuzz. <laughs> this looks like one of our... Reserve cars. One of our folks. It could be, uh, I think that was the Rev. It is the Rev. I'm, li- I'm live right now, just so you know. Good. How are you? Over there? All right. It looks like there's already a group gathering there on the south side. Okay. Well, sheriff asked us to be in the area, so. Okay. You guys stay, you guys stay safe, okay? 
We will, you too. Thanks. Thanks. So that's one of our community ambassadors who's out here. Uh, also, just uh, they'll get out and talk to the kids and uh, help them deal with their uh, grief and anger and hopefully prevent any further issues. So yeah, so what do we what do we think uh, by now, Sergeant Fuzz should be? Commander, or commander, I, I see. Commander. No, he's right. Yeah. I mean, it, I don't know. I haven't seen his work product really, no. so I don't know if he's senior commander material. I mean, all the senior commanders I've met are pretty sharp. Yeah. Well, you know, in, so, in dog years, he's he's got them all beat for age. Oh yeah, that's true. I'm just going to kind of make a little loop around here to get to the south side of the school so that, uh, which is where the activity's taking place. <coughs> Do you think when Sergeant Fuzz was, became a sergeant, there was a competitive process? <laughs> Like did did he have to take a test? You, you know, like an oral board, assessment center. You know, I'm, or do you know what I mean? I know. I don't know. I'm not sure. We have to find out. <laughs> Someone should look that information up for us. Yeah. I think Catherine is his uh, his person, his human yep. handler, um, driver, driver, yep, chauffeur, and maybe I, I think she's a backseater, so she might be able to answer some of those questions. You're saying Sergeant Fuzz because that is another name for police. <clears throat> um, as far as Rita is asking, she has a question about the dog of 10 years. Are you saying Sergeant Fuzz because that is another name for police? Growing up in South Dakota, the police in some areas referred to as the Fuzz. <clears throat> Did you guys hear of that before? Is Or is he fuzzy as a goat, I think? <laughs> well, Sergeant Fuzz is a uh, like an emotional support dog for the St. Paul Police Department so he's an actual dog yep. and uh, <clears throat> he just was named Sergeant Fuzz. I don't know he was Fuzz but then all of a sudden he's wearing chevrons. Yep. Uh, he got he's promoted pretty well, quickly. Right I mean like so straight out of the litter I think. And, uh, Should be walking the north I don't know. <laughs> Three, I called him back. Uh, he was at actually 7th and Randall, but he's walking up towards Victoria and Randall. We at, uh, when I was at Minneapolis, we had horses. Those things scare me. You guys had buggies too, though, right? <laughs> you mean, are you trying to imply I'm old? Like, like, horse and buggy? Yeah. Wow, that's cold. <laughs> I'm not that old. Although we didn't have uh, squad computers when I started. <laughs> yep. We had... Uh, we didn't have anything. Then we had MDTs, mobile data terminals. Yep. That... Uh, you could barely... See, it was like a one-line data terminal. On the green screen? On the green screen. Yep, that's what we have, or had when I was a reserve for Washington County as well. And uh, basically all it was was a big solid thing for your body to hit if you got in an accident. <laughs> um, and you still had to keep a written log of everything that you did. Yep. And... Uh, and a lot of the old timers didn't want you using it because <clears throat> they thought that you know that fancy technology was going to destroy police work. Yep. 
What was your first uh, firearm that you carried? Was it a six shooter? It's a Bur- no, it was a Barata 92. How did you get it Barata 92F. Um, and it was actually, I when I became a cop, I, I didn't have two pennies <laughs> to rub together. Yeah. So I actually yeah, bought it used from uh, an officer that was retiring. But it was in good shape. I carried it for uh, probably 10 years. And then uh, I switched to a six hour P220 uh, 45. And uh, carried that until I retired. Well, I, had, I also had a Smith & Wesson M&P. Um, for a while and but I carried the SIG mainly and then when I came over here we all had Glock everybody had Glocks and I had never (coughs) fired a Glock in my first day here the uh we went to the range because we had to qualify yep and they handed me a new Glock in a box and said all right here you go. We're going to qualify. <laughs> and uh, so I never shot it before, but I, I really liked it. It was fired smooth and was uh, easy to use. Yep. So a lot lighter than my 220. Oh, yeah. But, and now I think I'm hooked on the Glock. It's 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 weird, isn't it, to think that you have something like that, that, and you hope you never use it. Yes. You, you hope you never have to actually use it in the line of duty, and um, that no one ever puts you in that position. Yep. That would be good. Yeah, you get a nice view of the sunset here. Give me a view. Let's see if I can turn this so that you can see uh, here. This is the parking lot where the balloon release is going to take place. There's a lot of security and officers down there, so we're gonna just kind of hang out back a little bit. Uh, Alex, it depends on what department you work for, if you use a 40 or a 9. Um, each department has their own standard as to what they, what their policy has for them, what they use. Um, some some use 40, some use 9, some switch back and forth. So. We're pretty uh, flexible yep. here in that um, you can carry a 9 or a 40 or... Um, or another caliber if it's approved by the sheriff. Yep. Um, the sheriff, I, our sheriff, I think, carries a 40. I think so. And uh, also has a nine as a backup, but, um, you know, part of it is what you're comfortable with. Thank you. It is a pretty nice view. It's just, I'm gonna take credit for the um, Cinematography? Cinematography. You know, if we had, like, those reels that play at the end, you know? Yeah. So credit cinematography yep. to Under Sheriff Martin. Like Martin. Um, hairdo okay. by Great Clips. <laughs> <laughs> uniforms by Gauls. Yes. Uniforms. <laughs> and 1350 apparel. Yep. Probably. Yep. Because we both have that on. Yep. I ended up getting the more ghosted letters on it because they were out of the the gray and the yellow. Oh, I, so. I like that though. Yep. Although this is this is nice, like with the vest, so people can see. Yep. Cool. Yeah. 
probation 958. Magic Mike Martin. Clear 146 oh, no, IE no. Avenue West. No, Magic Mike. I heard there's a new Magic Mike movie coming <laughs> out, so you won't see me dancing. You guys for it. sure. Um, <laughs> I doubt it. That's not my kind of movie. No. I don't know, unless I find out that people, you know, are shooting at each other or driving fast, Race then maybe I'll go see it. My uh, daughters want to go see the new Ant-Man movie that's coming out. Uh, <clears throat> they're in, big into the, you know, watch Thor and, um, what's the other one? The guy that does all the time stuff. Uh, can't remember what it's called. Oh, see, so you're, you're talking to the wrong guy. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they're t talking to the wrong guy, but they're talking to the mother, too. <laughs> The sheriff would be able to answer yes, that. Yes. Yes. Um, he 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 loves those. You think about. I like going to a movie, right? Because it's the only time when you can just go and shut down, yep. turn your phone off, and go to a different reality, basically. Yep. And. Uh, but I still like like crime and. Gangster movies and all that stuff. I, I watched the why. I watched the Rookie on Netflix. I think it is. It's a pretty good one. I don't think is that the TV show. The, yeah. Yeah. Okay. The Rookie, and then there's Rookie Feds, but I don't I don't really watch that. That looks kind of dumb. Mm -hmm. I and I did, now this is gonna come out wrong. Okay. Okay. I love the Feds, right? Mm-hmm. They're our partners. But unless the show shows them sitting in an office <laughs> doing paperwork. I don't think it does. <laughs> then then it's not realistic. So but I, I, I kid because we have some great partners at the FBI and yep. the ATF, yep. uh, US Marshals, HSI that uh, help us with our some of our narcotics type stuff. Um <clears throat> We're lucky to have uh, them, and they, uh, the U.S. Attorney Andy Luger here in Minnesota, really does <coughs> a great job of supporting local law enforcement. I think this is uh, worth mentioning one more time for the, <coughs> any of the new viewers that are are on. On, uh, well, I'm sure all of you heard about Officer Ryan Sheik, Wiper Lake officer that was shot. Um, on Wednesday, February 15th, McDonald's is doing like a fundraiser for the family. So 25% of all their sales from 4.30 to 9.30 p.m. will go to help uh, Officer, Officer Sheik and his family. Um, the two locations are at 4950 Highway 61 next to Rudy's and 2070 County Road E East by the high school. So if you're in that area and you want to go and get dinner for the family, it would be greatly appreciated. I know his family would really appreciate it. And it's, again, it's awesome of McDonald's to be doing that for him. I see there's a call pending at Chick-fil-A. That's making me hungry. Oh, yeah. Let's see what the, the status is. This is the Chick-fil-A in is that the Roseville. Male in the bathroom who's not responsive. Do you think he ate too much of that uh, macaroni and cheese? He might have. Or too much Chick fil A sauce. I mean, I've felt like that before, <laughs> but not to make fun. It looks like he's having a medical, some type of medical in there. The original complaint, correct? Correct. The only time I felt unresponsive after eating was when we went to uh, Fogo de Chao. Oh, Fogo de Chao. That place is awesome. They just keep bringing you the meat. Yes. Boy, this is, uh, this is a large crowd that's gathering 
over <clears throat> across the street. I'm going to back the camera up just a little bit so you can see um, the parking lot's full, it looks like, and there are people parking out on the street. <coughs> For those of you who may have just joined us, we are at a uh, balloon release vigil for a young man that was killed uh, in our Harding High School on the east side of St. Paul, a uh, young man named Devin Scott, and the another student was the suspect. He was placed under arrest at the scene, but obviously it's a, a horrible tragedy for that to have occurred in a heaven. school. Some part of that. So we're just here to sit back and provide security and hopefully uh, answer questions that you have. Yep. Alex wants to know what's your favorite homemade meal? What's my favorite homemade meal? Yeah. Oh, that's a tough one. I like tacos. That sounds weird, but I like tacos. I grew up in San Diego when I was a little kid, so um, a lot of Mexican food. Um, beef stroganoff. My mom made a killer beef stroganoff. And uh, what else? My mom made a mean chili. Oh, chili. It was wonderful. That and her spaghetti, because she, you know, spent all day making the sauce and, and the meat and everything else. And it was always wonderful. That's my dad used to make chili um, before he passed. And he, you know, when I was a kid, a lot of times he would. He, uh, he also liked to do stir fry in like a wok. Oh yeah, which was really good. Yep. Now my my personal homemade meal that I like to make is steak. I like a good oh. steak and mashed potatoes. I make homemade mashed potatoes where I'll boil them and <clears throat> put them in a pot with some butter, add a little salt. Little uh, half and half to thicken them up. Thank you. Uh, my wife uh, loves to grill steaks. Yes. And uh, I'm not a big steak person. I'm not sure why. I like chicken. Yeah. So she'll make chicken for me a lot of times. I can do the steak. I think it's because uh, it always hurts my teeth chewing it. Well, maybe. You got to get the right, uh, right cut of meat. I think. Probably had... what I need is a dentist. Is to go to the <laughs> dentist instead of avoiding the dentist. And some floss. <laughs> and some floss. <laughs> and some uh, what's the what's the aura gel or that gel. you put on there? <laughs> it gets, numbs it. Oh. So it's 5.53 on our squad computer right now, which uh, at 6 o'clock is supposed to be a balloon release for Devin Scott, who was um, killed at Harding High School. So we're just sitting over here. Um, St. Paul PD has squads out here. And we're sitting here just to uh, <clears throat> provide a little extra um, security for the family and friends. And... Um, our ambassadors are also out here. No, my question for you, Mike. Uh-oh. What was your favorite food at the fair? Oh, my favorite food at the fair. This is easy. Vescios. I like to go to Vescios. I like the fried raviolis. I like the... Uh, they used to have an Italian egg roll, but they don't have that anymore. Um, everything at Vascio's is good. And then my next favorite is the steak sandwich at Mancini's. Yep. Got to go in there. Got to say hi to the Mancini's. Little live music. Yep. Um, 
I don't know. If I if I could get those, <clears throat> obviously <throat> cheese curds you gotta have when you're at the fair. Did you try the blueberry mini donuts this year? I did not, but I heard from a ton of people how good they were. I brought Dave Titus up there, and we got. Did he buy, or did you have to buy no, for him? Oh wow, well. that's awesome! <clears throat> good and job, think, Dave. And I think he went back every day and got some. That was at French Meadow, right? Uh, Bakery or no? It was up on the French north French end. Um, I can't remember the name of the place. Oh, it was new okay. this year, I think. Go work some too. Oh, all right. They had that really tall top on their on their stand. Oh, good so, regard. Huh. Whoever's with the suspect. And then they had that, uh, which I didn't try, was the dill pickle pizza. Oh yeah, I, the line was too long. Yes, I, I went by. I started there at seven a.m. and it was packed at seven thirty. Wow. A lot of people ask me for directions to the Dill Pickle Pizza booth. Oh, yeah. They're up, uh, they were across from the uh, education building. Axel's uh, um, steak bites. Cool they're, they're little bowl bites. Bowl bites yep. are really good, too. Yes. <clears throat> Clear, 946 Clark Street. There's a lot of people here. There's a ton of people here. I'm not good at estimating crowds, <coughs> so I'm just going to say a lot of people. I don't know how well we can. Gene wants to know if you remember Cafe Di Nopolis that was on Hennepin. Cafe Di Napoli. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Um, awesome food there. Awesome Italian food right there on Hennepin at about right. And... Uh, if I'm not mistaken, and I know she will text me, my wife's friend's friend, Chris, parents owned that restaurant, if I'm not mistaken. Downstairs neighbors yelling and screaming profanities. And then I have a lift assist at the Sage Park Department. One of my favorites, that and Totino's, which isn't around anymore. <coughs> Had a lot of, a lot of people talking about food on here. Ah. Burritos with hot salsa and tortilla chips. Ooh, I like that. Cheese curds, mini donuts, and the pizza on a stick. Everyone will laugh. My favorite meal: liver cooked with bacon and onions, spinach, and garlic mashed potatoes. Huh. My uh, grandmother would cook liver, and I wouldn't even go in the house. <laughs> and then my <clears throat> my mom would make lutefisk, and that was absolutely terrible. Oh, Dick. You know what? I I was never a fan of broccoli or asparagus. I wasn't either, but I do eat asparagus now. Um, well, I, so I, I used to work at a grocery store and uh, worked, so in the produce, worked in the produce department. I worked in produce for a little while. And I'd always eat the raw broccoli. Oh, really? I loved it. I don't like broccoli cooked, but I'll eat it raw. But so you were working there. there. I worked at Byerly's. I worked at Nolan's. Oh, Nolan's. Oh, Nolan's. A couple of good ones. Wild Happy Bill Nolan. And I worked there for... The Eight. one in Forest Lake, or nope, one in Maplewood, <coughs> right on Wasn't Stillwater there Road. There one in Forest Lake, in the ones. There was uh, Maplewood, St. Paul. Um, there was one in Andover. Huh. Uh, there might have been one in Forest Lake. I don't remember. I was thinking there was, and then it became like a countryside. But um, most of the Nolans now, uh, Marie Artoon, who owned Nolans, started Festival Foods. Okay. So she did sell off quite a few of the Nolans. I think the one on the one on Stillwater Road is still there, <clears throat> and I think there's one other one still. I worked there, and after I left there, I went to the Ford plant. Worked there for a while. Then uh, was a graphic designer for about five years. Was the art director in the art department. 
and then the one of our sales people came up and said, "Hey, Ramsey County's hiring correctional officers." So I was like, "I'll apply. I'll try that." So I applied and got in, which was good. Worked there for a long time. My uh, great grandfather and my great uncle were both cops. One in Camden, New Jersey, and uh, one in Pennsylvania. So I have my my great grandfather's police badge still. Oh, awesome! He uh, he played professional baseball up until the war, <clears throat> and then got out of the war and became a police officer. Oh, that's awesome. He was a large Irishman. A lot of cops were. <laughs> I honestly think that when I came on, those old guys that were Vietnam veterans and whatnot, they were all giants. Yes. If not uh, physically, most of them were physically. Yep. Just their personalities, and uh, you could tell they'd been through some experiences. Yep. Yeah, my dad was in uh, was in the Air Force. He never went into law enforcement, but he sold uh, petroleum equipment. So he sold gas pumps and underground tanks and canopies and ah. everything. He he traveled a lot. Yeah, my dad did too. <coughs> he was gone pretty much every weekend when we were growing up. Huh. My dad worked for Control Data. Okay. And he sold computer systems and all over the country and the world. Yep. And so he was traveling a lot. And that's how we ended up here. Yep. And then they eventually, he retired uh, just before they dissolved yep. Control Data. My dad was born in Chester, Pennsylvania, and my grandfather served in World War II when he came out. <clears throat> they moved to Wisconsin. My grandfather was a, he owned a TV repair business and was a Methodist minister. Wow. My, he died, oh geez, seven, eight years ago now, and my grandmother is still alive. She's going to be 99. He was 95, I believe, when he died. She's going to be 99 this year. My grandpa just, just died. He was 101. And, uh... His wife, who was not my biological grandma, but I'll call her my grandma, is still alive. Still living in Oklahoma. Yep. Doesn't want to leave the house. Yep. And uh, we were just down there for his memorial service. And it was good to see all the family. Yep. My grandmother still lives in Florida. There goes one balloon. I'm guessing that was just a bad grip. Yep. <laughs> my, uh, my aunt and uncle live in Florida, very close to her. They just came back for my mom's memorial service. <clears throat> and, uh, and they came back on the How coldest day because oh. we had we had our service on the fourth, and it was I want to say maybe four degrees out. Oh. So they left in eighty degree weather and <laughs> came came to this. Oh. So for those of you who just turned on, we're uh, we're at Harding High School on the east side of St. Paul. Um, we're in, uh, we're Ramsey County deputies, and uh, we're in the city of St. Paul, and we had a young man who was killed at this high school last Friday, and they are doing a balloon release memorial for him this evening, and we're just here to help um, provide security for the family and friends and uh, while they deal with this loss and go through this memorial and make sure nobody comes and causes them problems. Vehicles on the south side, eastbound 96 between Rice and McMenemy. I'm gonna, so we're monitoring the large crowd over there and I back, backed up the camera a little bit <coughs> so that you can see the balloon release, hopefully, when it occurs. Not that I'm aware of. You got two cars 
facing eastbound and a pickup truck facing westbound. South side, eastbound, we come enemy. They're on the shoulder, but not by much. It's right by where the creek crosses across underneath the road. True. All right, I'll System. I thought I did too. Maybe it was just my stomach growling. No, food talk. I think it was a PA system <laughs> or maybe somebody yelling at us because they think we're suspicious sitting out here. <clears throat> so I had, um, I'm under Sheriff Mike Martin. I'm with oh, Sergeant James Chin, and we're with the Ramsey County Sheriff's Office. Our sheriff is three vehicles on the south side of 96 eastbound. Bob Fletcher, who about uh, almost two years ago now started live streaming uh, his patrols and talking to people in an attempt to kind of educate them about what we do every day and how we make decisions and show people that we're just normal well I like to think I'm normal <laughs> and uh, over time he's uh, invited uh, others he has Pat Scott who rides with him every Friday night um, at 9-11 or sometimes a little earlier and uh on Mondays, I get to take you along in my back seat on Mondays with Mike. And Wednesdays, we have our young kids. I don't know what else to call them. The young and the selfless. The young and the selfless. I, I got not to be not to be a copyright infringement. With no. The young and the restless. They don't seem restless, but they are selfless. And uh, they go out and. Spend a lot of time looking for stolen cars, and um, the whole idea of this is to educate people on what we do, how we make decisions, uh, and what our days really like. Um, I could, you got to see earlier, um, Jim and I helping arrest a. a young man, I don't know, middle eight young, yeah. a little young, younger than us, yep. guy who had a gun and a bunch of narcotics on him, and uh, um, we assisted Maplewood and yeah, boxing in his car and um, getting him out and getting him in custody. So you got to see that exciting stuff, but the reality is the majority of our time is keeping our eyes open talking to yeah, people, right uh, supporting the community like we are right now, and um, just trying to, to do the right thing. Yeah, it's not all action-packed all the time. It's, it's a lot of uh, driving around trying to find stuff. It's less cops and more Reno 911. Yes. No, we're, we're not quite that irreverent, but we, we like to have fun. And uh, I can tell you, um, everybody who works with us has a passion for doing this. And uh, we always encourage them to have fun while they're working. I know last uh, last Monday I got a little grief for cutting it short, 55 minutes. <laughs> so we're in overtime this week and uh, almost a double overtime. And uh, But I didn't make you sit and watch me do paperwork. Yeah. So look at the positive side. I mean, that can be entertaining too. Well, it all depends. <laughs> <laughs> The jail was busy that day on 
Monday when we brought the inmate in. I, we brought him in and uh, I interviewed him for a while. We did some stuff and I went in to try to get him uh, uh, booked in and they had a medical in oh, the yeah. jail. So the jail was locked down while they had a medical. So then I got the entertainment of sitting and talking to my inmate um, who was still Mm. Under the influence <laughs> of of something for a while, and uh, which was kind of entertaining. He actually was a nice guy, even though he's involved in criminal activity. But. We're getting information that um, there's a <clears throat> at least one of our uh, young men who we keep track of is here uh, live streaming at the balloon release. Yes. Someone did a post before, be careful, because I have a bad cough. Um, <clears throat> you have a bad cough? I've had this cold for about three and a half to four weeks now, so it comes and goes. It's not COVID. It's just uh, one of my typical winter colds that I get. Maybe it's the long cold. They talk about, <laughs> yeah. you know. I have a, we have a family friend uh, who's from Ireland. She came over and stayed with my uh, wife's family as an uh, exchange student years ago. She contracted COVID and had lost all of her hair. Could barely walk, couldn't talk. And she's finally on the mend, but she has, she has what they call long COVID. Huh. Not something anybody wants, because that does not sound fun. I sometimes think I suffer from long crabbiness. <laughs> like, I got crabby once, and I still it get it. never went away. Every once in a while, it never really went away. It won't wear off. Yeah. People just keep pouring in here. So we're we're at this balloon release. It was supposed to occur at six o'clock. I'm guessing that uh, they're waiting for more people that are coming in, and uh, they may be giving speeches. Dang it! If we weren't busy. <laughs> We could go to that call for the sick squirrel on the person's porch. I hate that. So we went, when I was at Minneapolis, we had, I was, when I was still a street officer, we got a call to a burglary in progress at a townhouse. And to make a long story short, it was a squirrel mm -hmm. that had climbed down into the fireplace and they had the glass door, so it's banging against it. So it sounded like somebody was in the house and it was a young lady who lived there by herself. So she was uh, scared, of course. And so we went in there and uh, we tasked the rookie with getting the squirrel out of the fireplace, <laughs> right? And... Uh, I'm not going to mention his name because a lot of people, you know, might know him, but his initials are KP okay. at uh, Minneapolis. He's now a lieutenant. He may be a, higher than that. He may be a commander now. But he took a brown, gar like a grocery bag, paper grocery bag, and he put it in front and then cracked open the door to the uh, fireplace and the squirrel jumped right through the gap above and out and was running around inside the house yep. and uh, we chased the squirrel upstairs 
and then back downstairs and uh, KP jumped up on a table because he was scared because the <laughs> squirrel was coming at him. And uh, anyway, all of a sudden the squirrel just collapsed like it had a heart attack or something. <laughs> I don't know if it was playing possum or what. And one of the guys with us, Kurt Graff, picked up the squirrel and carried it outside and put it in a tree and we left. And give it a little CPR and give it well, a little heart pumping again. I'm not sure how active the squirrel was afterwards. It was still just kind of laying on the branch. But uh, the poor squirrel. But who's more scared, the lady in there or the squirrel when it sees four of us cops <laughs> trying to get it out? Trying to get it out of the fireplace. Trump is watching and hearing a male hit his wife inside the address. He's trying to get My, uh, more of your <clears throat> In-laws in their fireplace used to get birds all the time. So he'd be sitting in the TV room and hear something. And you'd look over and see a little bird looking out the glass at you. <clears throat> My brother-in-law got very uh, very good at getting the bird out, holding up a sheet and directing it out the door. Wow. It would leave black soot marks on the ceiling from its wings, but... Huh. Leave the mail is going to be the neighbors because I use a watching this. <coughs> <coughs> Gary said, should have called Cousin Eddie. Ooh, Cousin Eddie could have flushed it. Yep. Caller's a number 14, the second hand info that somebody is in the parking lot breaking windows on vehicles. Gets his girlfriend's Mazda had his window open. We have open squirrels in our backyard. We have a couple of really big oak trees in our backyard. And the squirrels jump down from that onto the deck. Or, mm -hmm. And it drives the dogs crazy. Oh, yeah. Just crazy. We have uh, a lot of bunnies and squirrels in our yard, and my dog sits at the window and whines and barks at them. It's... I want to find a way to get rid of all the squirrels and bunnies so I don't have to listen to her barking out the window anymore. I'll let her out and she'll run all the way down to the little fence and stare at them. She doesn't make a noise when she's outside, but she just stares at them. That's funny. <clears throat> she's a goofy dog. Yeah, the school is pretty packed. There's a lot of, a lot of people showing up for this. They just keep showing up. Yep. A lot of people are parking around the north side and walking yep. down. The balloon just... Got away from them. 2271, clear fall. Maybe they're test balloons. <laughs> Testing the wind. Any other good comments we got on there? Nothing yet. Everyone's Questions. talking about, uh, glad to see the support for Devin Scott. Um, one, one person asked, uh, if you guys pulled your guns out on the squirrel. I'm gonna just go ahead and not answer that. <laughs> what, what's the, um, statute of limitations on <laughs> ag assault against the squirrel? No, we didn't pull our guns out. It would not look good no. to shoot a squirrel in someone's fireplace. No. So, 
but I, there's got to be a better way, like maybe like some sleeping gas that you could pump in there and put the squirrel to sleep and then carry it outside like Sleeping Beauty and put it out where it would be safe. <laughs> <laughs> then you could wake it up with a kiss. Uh, no. You could be the squirrel's Prince Charming. A frog. Isn't it a frog that you kiss a prince or something? I don't know. We could take it to Frog Town. There you go. <laughs> um, nope, we did not pull a gun on the squirrel in this particular incident. <laughs> uh, Someone said no red's going to be tracking the balloons. They probably will. I don't know. Yep. Hopefully. It's. Those, that Chinese spy <coughs> balloon, that right. whole thing is weird. I, I kind of wonder if, you know, all these years, some of the UFOs people have seen have been these balloons, balloons. or whatever. And then they've shot down like three more. Yes. Which, um, I want to know what those are. Yeah. Is it just space junk? But it, it wouldn't be... It's not high enough up to be in orbit, I don't think. No. So, I, mean, I don't pretend to be an astronomer or whatever it is, but... You guys pulls, pulled guns on that Maplewood guy, and they get the bust. Generous Undersheriff gave me x lax attack. <laughs> <clears throat> that was a, there was a Maplewood call. We were just assisting them. So that's why, I mean, and the beauty of they'll it take is, over the reports and everything on that. Yeah. Well, the beauty of that is we did have our guns out, but we gave him commands and he complied with our commands. And um, we were able to recover his gun. Thank goodness he didn't come out with it, but he had it at the ready. Right down in front of his seat. Yes, he did. Five three one. Speak clear four with two six three. And it was fully loaded with. The, yeah. I just saw a quick look, but it looked like hollow points. <coughs> it had one in the chamber. One in the chamber. Thirty round extended magazine. Yep. And the serial number scratched off, which is uh, itself a felony. Yep. Yeah, he will. And he's uh, <clears throat> looking at his criminal history. He's prohibited from possessing a firearm because yep. of a prior conviction. So he will definitely uh, do some time on that one. No, the car was not... Well, we don't know that the car was stolen. It was a rental. So it uh, it may have been rented and never returned and not reported. We're unsure. There's some really <coughs> um, unusual... Well, I don't know. Complicated laws when it comes to rental vehicles being stolen. Um, they have to be stolen for a certain... Not returned for a certain amount of time before they can report it as stolen and uh, it oftentimes results in not being able to charge someone because at one point they had permission to drive the car and then it turns into a civil matter called a breach of trust Kind of like when one of my older boys takes one of my shirts <laughs> and doesn't return it. And then I see them wearing it like a month later. My uh, my daughter who's watching right now will completely understand your comment there. I have a lot of sweatshirts that are uh, now in her closet and she wears them to school all the time. Uh, and says, you're never getting this back. This one's mine now. Oops. That's <clears> very <throat> nice. Usually my daughter's borrowing my wife's stuff. Yeah, my my daughter likes my sweatshirts because they're big and 
baggy and comfortable. 4483 ML. Let's see here. So we're still waiting here for the balloon release. Um, we're guessing that they're um, talking. People are giving speeches. They're uh, eulogizing Devin Scott. And then <coughs> eventually the balloons will be released. Someone asked, do you drive differently? off the clock than you do on the clock. I tend to drive the same. I'm not really a fast driver unless I need to be at work. I don't I don't need to make the officers that are out working have to take and pull me over because I'm speeding. So, And I would concur. Um, I won't say I never speed. Yeah because that would not be true. But um, but I will sometimes notice I'm driving too fast and I'll slow down because I don't want some poor trooper yep. to have to get out on the side of the road where people are flying by yep. and deal with me. And, uh, and I'm actually, <clears throat> there'll be uh, people that will tell you that I drive too slow sometimes at work like um, the night action Alex Alex said faster daddy faster <laughs> by accident <Yep>. I think <coughs> he claims it was by accident because I had just told him not to say that and then he said it then he did. So, I see that my wife is watching now as well oh good Good. Welcome. <laughs> Helping get the numbers up there. Probably not the most uh, exciting. No. Nope. <clears throat> we're just waiting right for the... now, but we had some fun earlier, but now we're, we're doing our uh, due diligence here for community safety. Yep. For all of the we fun, exciting, the crazy outside. stuff we do, cold in the cold, so we also yeah. uh, do a lot of things that um, just to make people feel comfortable and safer. And by the way, t by tomorrow around, most likely by noon, yeah. there will be a charging decision made on the juvenile that was arrested that who um, stabbed Devin Two Scott. Zero during an altercation uh, that they have till tomorrow to charge um, that young man and then uh, we will see where the case goes from there. What was one of your funnier calls or experiences as a cop? Oh, man. <laughs> like one stories that I could actually tell on here? Right. Or So I was a brand new rookie. Brand new. I mean, like two, three days in uh, at Minneapolis. And so I had an FTO, a field training officer, and then... Another rookie who came on in my same class in his FTO, and we went to dinner at the Pizza Hut on 22nd and Lake in Minneapolis. It's not there anymore. It's where the uh, um, Hiawatha crossings is. Anyway, uh, I went into the. We went in there, and I needed to go to the bathroom, so I went into the bathroom and I had a set of handcuffs hanging on the back of my belt and I backed up into the handicap rail <laughs> in the bathroom and locked myself to the handicap rail in the bathroom and then when I went to pull the other end of the cuffs out it spun around and and cuffed me to my own belt um, and uh <clears throat> 
So I had to take, like pull, undo my belt, get my handcuff key, reach around in the back, find the little handcuff hole, keyhole, and uncuff myself <laughs> all while my FTO and the other two cops are out there waiting to order, wondering where I am <laughs> and uh, thinking that I fell in. So that would have been kind of, at the time it wasn't funny. It was stressful. <laughs> but I look back now and it was funny. How about you? The funniest uh, one that I had was when I was on, out on patrol on FTO <clears throat> and we got a call to a house for a guy that had a uh, live turkey, wild turkey that had flown into his house. Wow. And he wanted us to shoot it. And they're mean. Yes. Did you shoot it? No. We might have shot it with less lethal. You less sure, lethal than we did. Okay, so uh, what kind of less lethal? The bean bag. A bean bag? Yeah, but That's he was pretty good, thank you. He was uh he was like, I don't care about the damage, nothing. I was like, okay. So So you less lethal that yeah. how did it taste? Um I we didn't eat it. We you didn't we, eat it? We called and had, You're supposed uh, to eat anything you shoot. Had Mario you? or someone come pick it up. Oh the, the animal control it. guy. Was it dead? Yeah. Oh okay. well. You know, that's sad, but it's really less lethal. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, just brimful. Yeah, a couple of drones overhead at the bullet release under. They're not ours, right? Correct, they're not ours. All right, so we have a deputy who's just checking to make sure that uh, the drones they have here are not our drones. We wouldn't use our drones in a situation like this. No. Um, unless the family asked for some reason. Um, but even then, I don't know why they would. Daniel, vote is logging off. It's it's 1.30 a.m. over in Dusseldorf. Oh, in Dusseldorf. Dusseldorf. It's 1.30 a.m. Have a good night. Get some sleep. <coughs> well, shout out to my boy, Nick Greco, who's watching. Worked with him at the University of Minnesota for a little while between Minneapolis and coming over here. Great guy, firefighter, medic. Uh, just a, a great guy and I'm sorry to hear about his wife, Christy, who passed away recently. speech right now still speeches going on yep over there nick was uh nick was one of those guys that made work fun yep we would laugh and have fun even when we were <clears throat> even on tough days he, he helped me patch up when i uh my old butt got out of bed and slipped and hit my head on my dresser and cut <laughs> open my forehead. He helped me patch it up. And, uh, but the one thing I wouldn't do, the one thing I wouldn't do is let Nick Greco drive my golf cart. Because, uh, he, he's, he wrecked a golf cart once and we both got yelled at over it. Oh, yeah. So... <coughs> I 
what's the red light flashing on and off in the distance? That would be the first uh, national bank that's downtown St. Paul. It's a, uh, no, well, maybe right above it, that I believe is a drone that's flying around. Is that your phone? Yeah. My ears are playing tricks on me. It sounds like it's coming from my phone. I know. Everybody's phones are kind of sound the same. So we're sitting here. There's still um, speeches going on. Uh, memorializing Devin Scott and and uh, addressing the, the violence that occurred on Friday here at Harding High School. Um, we're going to stick around <coughs> until balloons are released. And we know that people are able to leave safely. Did you work in the third precinct? I did work in the third precinct for a while. I worked in there as a officer when I first came on. And then uh, later on, then I went to the fifth precinct for a while. And then went to the gang unit. I was in the gang unit for uh, six years, uh, three as an officer slash investigator, and then three as a sergeant after I got promoted. And when I got promoted to lieutenant, I went back to the third precinct and was a shift lieutenant, the mid-watch shift lieutenant. So from roughly four in the afternoon until two at night and then was eventually we went to sector lieutenants and I had the Phillips neighborhood on uh, basically everything from Lake Street to downtown Minneapolis from the river over to 35W and uh, loved it there great people uh, both the citizens and the cops it was a great place to work got uh, a lot of experience working with the Native American community there, um, helping uh, redevelop uh, Franklin Avenue from Hiawatha to Chicago uh, with the Native American Business Development Corporation uh, and uh, where they would buy up blighted properties and problem properties and then redevelop those into uh, businesses run by people in the community. It was really a tremendous experience. Rilo Partlow wants to know if <clears throat> when you were in the work the gang unit, were you part of the Jump Out Boys? If you were, he wants to thank you. That unit cleaned up the neighborhood. Well, the term jump out boys is kind of become a negative connotation, but I worked in uh, in the gang unit back when we were out on the street. We were in marked squads that said gang units and, and some unmarks, and uh, we would go into areas that were problematic, and especially in the uh, 90s, 95, 96, um, 97 were... Uh, our bigger years and we ended up getting some great awards from the US Attorney General's office for our efforts at reducing crime and working with the community. We had a good partnership with Honeywell and General Mills and others who helped fund positive interventions while we were uh, trying to get the really violent people <clears throat> off the street. And I only got shot at a couple times. And, <laughs> um, but I somehow made it. Do you think they'll ever put the... Per Minneapolis will ever put the 3rd Precinct back where they were pre-riot? No. I don't think the, that um, the... politics in the city will allow for the third precinct to be rebuilt on the spot where it was. I think uh, that uh, there's a belief that 
that needs to be that 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 spot needs to be um, replaced and that the third precinct needs to be in somewhere else and uh, you know I, I don't necessarily agree with that decision but I'm not over there now so um, it's uh, I can tell you that police precincts are like the officer's home yep. it's that's your home it's where you keep your stuff it's where you have your pictures it's where you it's the place you can go where you should always be safe and be able to you know decompress and be with your partners and and uh unfortunately that third precinct was allowed to be burned down and um it could have been prevented and and it wasn't and it was uh, i just don't think that there's there will be a political will to rebuild there and then uh, Sandy wants to know if you knew her dad, Ken Haug. Ken Haug. Mm -hmm. I don't know Ken Haug. Uh, how's it spelled? H A U G. No, sorry, I, he must have been before my time, because there was a point where I knew everybody. Still do. <laughs> well. <laughs> Now I'd go over there and I probably would know 10% of yep. the cops over there. It's turned over so much. Yep. Um, but when I was, you know, when I was in the gang unit, we were citywide, so we'd interact with everybody. And we did a lot of training as well. So, um, so we got to know officers and all the precincts <coughs> and divisions. Had some great cops working for me. Um, somebody asked if I knew Derek Chauvin. I did not know Derek Chauvin. Um, I had seen him a couple times. I knew who he was, but I did not know him at all. Never worked with him. Um, and, uh, you know, I don't think... Uh, um, I don't think that's a bad thing. Um, did you know... Dixon Cider. Dixon oh. Cider. I get it. I get it. Someone did that to us one yeah. night, too. But, uh... How about Jerry Shanahan? I knew Jerry Shanahan. <laughs> yeah, but he's... I never worked directly with him, but I knew who he was. Good guy. Tommy Tripp? Oh, Tommy Tripp. <laughs> Trip with two keys. Yep. Tommy Tripp and I worked together in the third precinct when I first came on. I knew him, uh, just a character, uh, unbelievable character, um, fun to work with, and uh, always made our our shift parties, which we called shift meetings. Mm -hmm. uh, always made them entertaining. Thanks, Kathy. Kathy Cordes loves having both me and you together. Oh, there go the balloons. Keep up the good work. Kathy Cordes was a staple at the freight farm for years. Ah. So I don't know if you could see the balloons. Yeah, they're kind of, you can kind of see them. So the balloons were just released. There are a lot of balloons. <coughs> but they're... Uh, 
they're hard to see. So hopefully it looks like some people are starting to leave and uh, fortunately we it's been a peaceful event and uh, people can memorialize Devin and still um, in a peaceful way and hopefully bring some uh, change to help reduce violence. <clears throat> Michael McDaniel says we make a great team. Oh. Thank you, Michael McDaniel. <laughs> Who's, what's the, oh, it's, it's Michael McDonald that was the singer that was so good. Right? Yes. That, okay. I was going to say could, we could have you sing us a song, <laughs> right. but I guess not. I told the sheriff today, you know, he's got the bumper music that he has yep. from Kyle, his son. I don't have any bumper music. And, uh, you know, we'll get a strike from Facebook yep. and YouTube if we use copyrighted music. So maybe we have to find some obscure artist that they wouldn't know about. I can go bang something out on the drums. What's flying overhead? I believe a drone. Yep, then it's another drone. Yeah, there's a drone up there, a white drone. It's emitting a white light. And who knows, maybe. No, I don't think St. Paul has a drone program, so. St. Paul does not have drones <clears throat> yet. But we support them when they need it. Tara said, <clears throat> Mike, does your rear view mirror have buttons on it? If so, you can adjust it to make things so things don't look so close. Um, there are buttons. Boy, I hate to push buttons and not know what they look like, but... Michael said, you don't want me singing. <laughs> uh, I'm with you, buddy. <laughs> I pushed buttons on there and it didn't do anything, so. But I'll take it. I'll, I'll have someone show me, like a 12-year-old kid, <laughs> show me how to do it. Did you guys know Tom Smith? I worked with him at MCF. Uh, Oak Park Heights in the 80s. Oh, Tom Smith. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. Still get to see him at uh, some of the meetings that I go to the uh, Violent Crime Coordinating Council. He uh, is part of that because of the Department of Public Safety. He's working over there as assistant commissioner. Yep. And uh, has decided, I think, to stick around for a little while with the new commissioner, Bob Jacobson. Tom's a good guy. I met him back in the early 90s. We'll give it a couple more minutes and then we'll uh, probably call it a day. Yep. Let these guys clear out a little bit. <clears throat> AJ, uh, my name is Deputy James Chin. I'm riding with uh, Mike today.
So there, just so you know, it's there's a highly selective process to decide <laughs> who gets to ride with me. Um, in other words, whoever I run into sometime, <laughs> but <laughs> just before <laughs> I go, actually, uh, another deputy was going to come ride with today, but he couldn't, and uh, so I recruited Sergeant Chin. I figured he's got all the intel. Yeah. He's the intel guy, so we'll bring him about. Gerald's finally home from the hospital. Was in the cardiac care area of Ridgeview Hospital in Waconia. He had COVID. Well, we're glad you glad you're back home now. Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> Hopefully, you heal up well. Yep. Just keep watching uh, live on patrol. I've heard that's good for your health. It's, yeah. Get you get your heart pumping a little bit here and there, and drink water and take ibuprofen. Yeah. That supposedly solves everything. <laughs> Here, a glass of tea with some whiskey in it. it helps too. Oh, tea with whiskey. Mm -hmm. All right. So one of these days, I don't want to give up all my best stories, but I, I am preparing to write a book of stories. Mm-hmm. So is it gonna be dad jokes or um no no <laughs> I do have a lot of those though in case you're wondering. Um my kids trust me. Um they don't like them. They're tired of them because <laughs> they've heard them and a lot of them came from my dad. Yep. So but no, it'll just be a book of stories. And and you know what? I have a feeling after people read it, they will understand me better. <laughs> Why I'm as nuts as I am. And, uh... Kind of what I've been through and, and uh... Mix up some <clears throat> tragic stories with some... Funny ones? Funny stories and weird stories and all my police stuff great stream today thank you I'd read that book I was trying I've, I've been trying to figure out what to call my book <clears throat> I have some ideas I hate to give them out on the air because someone might steal it right but uh, you know about a day in the life of mighty Mike Martin oh hmm? there you go fast times at wait no, that's a, that was a movie The funny part is since coming over here to the sheriff's office four years ago, mm -hmm. I've just gotten even more stories, yeah. right? It's like you can't avoid them. No. You can't avoid the good stories. There's, I have a million stories from the jail that I can't tell. <laughs> well, yeah, I can't tell just all some of the stories. strange things you see. Yeah. <clears throat> Not all of my stories would be appropriate no. for, you know, no. a book, but... There you go. Magnificent Moments with Mighty Mike. Oh, I like it. Tales. Today someone said, uh, where where are you going to lunch? And I said, Mavericks. And they said, ooh, Maverick Mondays with Mighty Mike. There you go. Huh? Tales from the Blue Line by Mike Martin. I like it. Well, I was thinking like blue to brown because I started out blue and now yeah. I'm brown. Um, or 
So, Tasha, when you've been on before and it's been Bob and Pat, Bob and Pat, uh, Bob is our sheriff, he started Live on Patrol, and uh, he decided to have add a few more shows. So, <clears throat> today, which is uh, Monday, Mondays you're normally riding with Under Sheriff Mike Martin, and each week he tends to have someone different with him. I'm with him today, I'm a uh, deputy in the intel unit. Um, Wednesdays you'll ride with the cat team and then on Fridays you'll ride with Bob and Pat and my guests won't always be deputies or cops mm -hmm. they may be celebrities yeah you know maybe um, Lizzo Lizzo yeah Lizzo might want to come Lizzo if you want to ride along I'd be happy to have you in the car <laughs> riding along all right, and we'll go visit your snowplow blizzle. And, uh, but, you know, I want to have different people that provide different perspectives. Um, one of my funniest stories that'll be in my book is taking Supreme Court <laughs> justices for a ride along. Yeah when I was in the gang unit. I was the sergeant in the gang unit in Minneapolis and we, uh, the Supreme Court was starting to see gang related cases and cases of uh, gang expert testimony. So they wanted to come and uh, see how we do our work. And, <coughs> um, they uh, asked if they could come and ride along with us. So we took four Supreme Court justices on a ride along. And uh, it was an interesting night. Yeah, let's put it Good. that way. So they're, they're Supreme Court justices, right? They're not like criminal law attorneys, yep. right? So they spent a lot of time asking us this question. Can you do that? <laughs> so... But, um, and we would explain to them the court law related yep. to um, what we can and can't do. At one point, we had a, a known um, convicted felon who had a uh, gun, and we chased him into a house, and then we froze the house yep. and to wait to get a search warrant. And this was back in the day where you had to write the search warrant and then go to the judge's house. Oh, sorry. Go to the judge's house and uh, get them to sign it. And, uh, but they didn't realize we could freeze the house. And uh, just little things like that um, that were interesting. Yep. But, uh, there's a front, funny twist that night where we went to one of our regular local eateries and uh, where they would always give us free food. Oh, yeah. And uh, we weren't really sure how to address that. And uh, the judges would not allow us to buy them dinner. So... I had to do a little tap dancing around uh, <laughs> to explain to him that uh, it was taken care of. So, but Robert Watson said riding sideways with live on patrol. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. I, I forgot to turn the the camera, but now you know what it's like if you're. In the passenger seat, looking diagonally. Yep. Alice Day said, "Hey, Under Sheriff Mike, it's backseaters from Target." Backseaters from Target. Oh, the ones that said hi to me on the Must have been. East Side Suburban Target that wanted a picture. Yep. Awesome. Nice ladies talk to me, surprised me because I was on the phone 
getting some printer ink and uh, I wasn't prepared to be surprised <laughs> but when I realized they weren't trying to rob me right. they were back seaters I was happy to pose for a picture with them <laughs> If you do see us out, Bob, Pat, me, Nicole, Jim, anybody, feel free to come and say hi to us. Yes. We, we appreciate the people that watch us and uh, support us, so always feel free to say hi. The other day I was told by someone that some people wanted to come say hi to me, but they were afraid to do so. Right. Um, yeah, don't ever be afraid to come no. talk to us. <laughs> no. I'm not, I don't bite anymore. I probably did when I was a kid. Yeah. <laughs> no, we're pretty, pretty friendly. Yeah, in a relative sense. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you're a bad guy. Yeah. Even then, we're still courteous. Yeah. I'd say the guy today with the, the gun and the drugs got a good treatment. Yeah, I was say by both us and... Uh, the Maplewood officers were yes. very uh, professional, and I watched them uh, check his cuffs to make sure, sure they weren't too tight or uncomfortable. Donna Rick wants us to name a snowplow live on patrol. Oh, I like it. Uh, ooh, live on snow po patrol. Yeah, snow. live on snow patrol. Snow patrol. I like it. So Sheriff Fletcher started live on patrol uh, during the pandemic when, uh, and well, actually, I think shortly, maybe before that, but. Um, to show people, it was it was in the aftermath of the George Floyd incident. To show people, you know, that we're human and um, that we have feelings and families and things as well, and that uh, we're not anything different than you. It's become very, um, it's been a successful attempt to teach people about law enforcement and what we do and, and how we work and the things that go through our minds. <clears throat> and you get to see that we're just normal people doing a job. Right. You know what's going through my mind right now? I'm hungry. Yeah, me too. We talked a lot about food. We did. And that made me hungry. Yes. I'm going to go home and get some dinner. Thank you. So I, I didn't eat too much last night. I tried to not do that. I did eat a lot of chips and dip. Cheesy, like, dip that was awesome. Oh, yeah. We had two different kinds of that. But uh, I ate so much, I was so full, I just, we had pizza, I didn't eat any pizza. Yeah, we had uh, pizza and some appetizers, and just kind of hung out. Was... So next year, I, I need to strategize better. Yeah. Not to eat too many chips and salsa before <laughs> the main course. It's like when I go to a Mexican restaurant, you yes. know, and you, they give you the chips and mm -hmm. you eat the chips and all that, and then you're not super hungry when the food comes out. Yes. <clears throat> I made that mistake at Fogo, and I got a salad first. Oh, their salad bar is oh, killer. Good, but yeah. with the amount of meat that came out, I was, uh, I was stuffed. I was on a trip with... Uh, bunch of guys and well guys and gals who from the National Game Center we were doing training in Fort Collins Colorado 
and they had a Rodizio grill, which is the same yep. concept, basically a Brazilian steakhouse. And uh, the uh, two of the guys decided they were going to have a contest to see who could eat more. Um, Did you win? It, well, I wasn't one <laughs> of them. Uh, I knew better. Because one of them played O-line for Nebraska, and uh, he's a big boy. And the other one is uh, a great guy, but was going to get all his money's worth. Oh, yeah. Right? Smaller guy. And the smaller guy won. Well, he actually was able to keep eating when everybody else was done. So... <coughs> just want to say thanks to everyone for sticking around with us this afternoon. I know it uh, ended on a, a little more somber note, but um, we're glad that you were here and uh, glad we could show you a little action in the middle. And uh, Wednesday, feel free to join the younger, the young and the selfless yep. cat team and Intel members as they're out. And then Friday night with Bob and Pat. And then Nicole at midnight. Oh, yeah, I forgot. Nick at night. Nick at night. Nick at midnight on Friday nights. Yep. So 